Welcome back, truth seekers from around the world. It is time for another edition of the Flat Earth Files. Um, we have a very special guest tonight. Uh, he is one of the legendary pioneers of the modern Flat Earth movement. His video series, Flat Earth Clues, from 2015 went viral and has played a significant role in many people's journey to the truth. Oh, by the way, that video series has millions of views and continues to grow every single day. And you can catch Mark at Flattoberfest 2023 on October 21st and 22nd at Sam's Town Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. Conference hours are noon to 10 p.m. both days. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Mark Sargent. Mark, good evening. How are you, sir? Hey, I'm good. Thank you very much. And by the way, uh, I am opening the conference on, on the first day, which means no one's going to remember anything that I do. Uh, because uh, the, the Flat Earth community likes to drink and partake of all sorts of things. And what they don't realize, and we're trying to tell people now, and I'll, I'll mention it on this show, is like, look, drink responsibly. Because as you know, Vegas is different from other places. The bars don't close. So beforehand, you know, you, you know, it's like last call. And then eventually you'd go home. Well, you want to order six beers at three in the morning. You can do that. I highly encourage you not to do that. So and and the other thing I want yeah. to mention was um yeah the the clues are still getting millions of hits, however the chat but most of those hits are not even coming from my channel. Uh, one of the reasons it went viral is because I made uh, the clues Creative Commons license. You know, I made it free to everybody, and three three just average run of the mill channels that look for the Creative Commons licenses. You know, because if you say it's like oh great I can put on, I can get the nickels. On my channel, yep. and they named it. They didn't even put Flat Earth in the title. One of them's called uh, "They're Hiding God with the Greatest Lie Ever." One is called "They're Hiding God with the Biggest Lie Ever." It was somebody stole from somebody else that was stealing, and somebody <laughs> called it uh, "Under the Dome" full documentary. Each one of them have millions of hits, and I don't know any of these people <laughs> at all. And I didn't know until probably five months later, after they first put their channel out, uh, because people said, "Oh, I loved your two-hour movie." I was like what what two hour movie you know because i i only made like these little 10 minute videos and someone you know of course right. the internet just mashed them all together released them as a thing it's like hey great you made thousands of dollars off it i'm, I'm happy for you so and but it, i get it got the word out so i'm not gonna complain yeah and i think that's the one cool thing about the truth community um sometimes plagiarism is a pat on the back as they say right it, it's a oh imitation uh, is the, the phrase. Yeah, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, and you're absolutely right. Uh, it happens to us all the time. Uh, in fact, it's part of my speech, which I'm doing in the um, in Vegas. The speech is going to be called "Flat Earth is the Real Pandemic," and I try to tell people as I look, the the top channels in Flat Earth barely crack six figures, right? And and those are the the and these guys have been around like me. You know, I I crack, barely crack six figures. I've been doing this for eight years, and yet every major channel on YouTube, if you can think of them. I don't care who they are, unless they're movie reviewers. They've done a flat Earth video, and and and, yeah. and with the best, and it gets millions of hits, millions and millions of hits. I mean, the number one I think was uh, Shane Dawson with like 40, 40 million hits, which is amazing. And what was amazing is all these channels did flat Earth videos. Nobody talked to us, so these guys are getting huge amounts of hits of our content and doing all this stuff. And it's, you know, and once one of them did it, they all did it. And yet nobody subscribes to our channel. We are the, um, and I, I don't know if you're old enough to remember, we would be the the Spice Girls of the conspiracy world. And you're probably going, <laughs> why are you talking about? I go, Spice Girls is the was the number one female pop band in the world. Yeah. Like, without oh, no, a doubt. No, I'm 54, bro. I'm oh, you, you do not look it. Um, uh, well, thank you very much, yeah, sir. Seriously, you look Good a lot younger than me. And I'm, I'm 55. So, uh. It's the number one female pop band in the in the world. I have yet to meet anyone that owns the album. So, <laughs> what happened? Yeah, <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> bought it. Nobody's going to admit to it. Yeah, come on. I mean, they made two right. bo two blockbuster movies. They were so huge, right? right? And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's that's what we are. Lots of people are into flat Earth. Very few people will admit it in public. Ninety percent of our our um our membership is still in the closet. Which I, I love and I hate simultaneously. We're the we're that secret army that's out there. Yeah. So just a little backstory about myself. I've had a podcast called the the Fact Hunter for four years, and um, uh, probably within the first four or five months into the podcast, David Weiss sent me an email, and I'm like, "What kind of nutcase is emailing me about the flat Earth?" 
Yeah, I deleted it, but curiosity got the best of me. I pulled him back. I contacted him and um, I brought him on. And actually, I think he had a video from Croak 777. So by the time I brought him on, I was wide awake to flat earth and it changed my life. And I yeah. had David Weiss on the podcast and I was like so excited because I'm sharing this newfound information to my audience. Guys, guess what? Yeah. This heliocentrism thing is a lie. And I wake up the next morning and check my email and I'm like, you're a moron. I'm never listening to your podcast again. I had no clue how yeah. divisive the flat was in the truth community. Was that uh, something that you knew going in? Um, yeah, well, I did because I was one of the early people that got into it. I was into it when nobody was into it. Um, in fact, David was lucky enough. He got into it just as the documentary, the Netflix documentary was wrapping up. So he didn't get to be part of it. And I think secretly behind the scenes, he's like, oh, thank God I dodged a bullet there because everyone that was in on it just got nailed to the wall. Um, however, yeah. had you had me on, I would have talked you out of it because it's one of the things that I, I tell people every holiday season. I say, okay, here's what's going to happen, everybody. It's Thanksgiving's coming up. And you're going to want to go home. You're going to want to sit down, everyone at the table, or you're carving turkey or whatever. And you're going to want to say, hey, what's new in your life, Bob? And you're going to want to say, oh, let me tell you what I'm into. Flat earth, right? <laughs> you've got to understand your context. You've got to understand the room, which is, look, you might as well tell yeah. people um, you've changed your religion, your sexuality, and you're a heroin addict simultaneously yep. right it, in fact it would be easier for them to understand because i've had horror stories come back because again the one of the the drawbacks of flat earth is once you once you flip once it's in your head it's in there forever however simultaneously you forgot the journey that got you there you know it may have taken right. you four weeks it may have taken you five weeks and then it's kind of like a like a children's puzzle right? it's like you you think oh, it's so simple i should have known this in the beginning you know what I can convince a family member over a coffee. <laughs> it's like, in fact, I'm going to try to do that because <laughs> it's in my head. I I see all the pieces and it's like when you're talking to a family yeah. member, yeah, they're, they're going to look at you like you've got a bug on your face and they do. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sorry you had to go through that because um, uh, for me, it wasn't that bad because what I did was um, when I made the clues. I put the the challenge out there to anybody. I said, look, the internet hive mind. Here's all my contact information, which is such a great idea. Put all your contact no information kid. online. Dox yourself. It's a great idea. No, I don't recommend that. I definitely, even women should never, ever do that regardless. Um, right. and, I, and I said, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. Tell me where I went wrong. Somebody come back at me and hit me. You know, I just basically stuck my chin out there. And the people that came at me weren't the trolls. Not right away. It was the um, uh, subject matter experts, people in the military and structural engineers and uh, air traffic controllers and pilots and, and stuff like that. And then, of course, the media, weird media stuff. I, I didn't know what the hell media was. I never, never worked with a field producer before or anything like that. So when I'll give you a Rob Skiba story, you may have heard this one or maybe not because, you know, Rob was one of the first people to interview me and, you know, because I ruined his life. And I, and I was his excuse. So when he would bring, when he would do the public public presentations, I was his insurance policy. He would bring up one slide. He was he would always say, "I'm 98 percent sure." In case this all goes south, <laughs> it's this guy's fault over here, right? And he put a, a picture up of my the clues. Fall guy. I was the fall guy. And so I remember uh, um, one of the producers from Coast to Coast contacted me almost immediately. And said, oh, hey, okay, you know, tell me what about Flat Earth, blah, blah, blah. And, and they I go, oh, they go, what's your name of your book? And I go, uh, I, I don't have a book, right? This is 2015. And they go, okay, what's the name of your DVD? And I go, I, 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 DVD? Don't don't have one of those either. And 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 she and she's like, you could hear her getting frustrated on the other end. She's like, okay, what's the name of your freaking website? And I go, look, I've been doing this for maybe five weeks, right? And 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 she's going. Why am I talking to you? I go, you called me <laughs> I go out of the blue only only because I doxed myself. So um, we worked it out. And she goes, OK, give me the nickel tour. And she goes, go. And I go, OK, here's Flatter, song and dance, blah, 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 blah. And she goes, all right, you're on. Right. And then I remember I, I knew there was something going on because Rob asked me shortly after I got on TFR because uh, uh, TFR offered me a show like after the second interview I did with Rob. They just called me up. They said, how would you like to be on TFR? I go, OK. And Rob asked me, he goes, he goes, so he goes, how many times do you have to solicit coast to coast before they let you on? And I go, 
solicit? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? He goes, well, he goes, I've been trying to submit to them for like two or three years. I, I can't, I can't get on the freaking show. And I go, uh, yeah, I hate to make this too, but I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> uh, which is why, again, if I ever live long enough to um, write an autobiography, and I'm still weighing my options on that one, uh, it's going to be called unsolicited because uh, for whatever reason, I never had to pick up a phone. It just, it just, ha- that's how I knew something was going on because it just happened. People were just calling me right and left and saying, hey, how would you like to do this? Hey, how would you like to publish a book? Hey, you know, and then the Netflix thing went in a completely, Never. And even when we were shooting Netflix for the thing for seven months, but none of the producers had any faith in it at all uh, to, to the point where it's like, well, we're never going to get any film festivals and we're definitely not going to be able to sell it. Right. And it's, and it's like every film festival they applied to, they got in instantly to the point where they were sending me out to film festivals, which is a terrible idea. They actually had me on people webcamming me live streaming me live to watch me to make sure I didn't say the wrong thing and go completely <laughs> off in the weeds. They want to know exactly what I was saying. Sure. And, um, and then when, uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, Amazon bought it immediately in iTunes and then finally Netflix. And yet yeah, kind of like you, when Netflix bought it, my email load doubled in a weekend and I was already getting a lot of emails. And then all of a sudden, you know, my email was just flooded with stuff. And I'm, I'm writing people. It's like, did something happen <laughs> that I don't know about? It's like, dude, Netflix picked up the movie. It's like, oh, God. Uh, anyway, sorry, I ramble. So please no. pull me out of the weeds from time to time. That's awesome. Hey, um, w- one thing that resonates with a lot of people and the big part of our podcast is we asked our guests to explain your journey to the truth. Um like, were you into conspiracies beforehand? What was your life coming up and what were your influences? Yeah. Uh, and then, I, of course, step, how did you come upon Flat Earth? Uh, okay. So my life was fairly, I don't want to steal the speech from Austin Powers, you know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> luge lessons, you know, summers in Rangoon where I was beaten with reeds when I was tied up in a burlap sack. Um. No, I, I grew up in uh, north of Seattle on a rural island in the middle of nowhere. I, I didn't know anything about it. I was very naive, very sheltered. Didn't even know there was more than one religion until after I left. And uh, kicked out of university in my junior year for manufacturing explosives on campus. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Uh, which was basically, look, I was running a, a legal fireworks company on on campus. And I uh, I got hit for it by the um it's, it's it's a slap in the wrist the first time you get hit you don't want to get hit twice it's basically a fireworks charge because illegal fireworks have only been illegal since really the sixties and then during my uh, community service uh because I knew a lot of teachers because I grew up in basically a teachers lounge because my family was teachers um I uh, I was teaching kids uh, computers early computers back in the the early nineties okay and. And then entered a video game, a uh, world pinball tournament, uh, digital pinball from a little company out in Tokyo called Little Wing. Won the tournament. Uh, it was a year long tournament. I'm not going to tell you how I won it. It takes a little while, but <clears throat> I did bend the rules a bit. I, I got the scores, but I bent the rules to where I basically finished the tournament six months before it was even over uh, and then kind of slipped in scores because, uh, but again, we'll talk after. And uh, part, and and then part of my prize was to uh, review one of their next games. I didn't like it very much at all, and I wrote this scathing review. Who knew Uh-oh. that I that I could do? Um, I could review video games. And uh, the the developer from Tokyo says, "Yeah, he's absolutely right." He goes, "We got to make all these changes." It's like you should hire this guy, and they did. And they wow. were out. They were out in Boulder, Colorado. So uh, I went out and interviewed for the job, and they hired me on the spot. Went out to Boulder, Colorado on my own and uh, did my own thing out there for 20 years to where I was playing video games for this company. I was a ringer for the company. So I would go out to conferences like Macworld Boston and Macworld uh, San Fran and E3 and stuff like that and uh, make the games look better than they were. I was a, you know, a, a game gamer ringer. But gotcha. this was I was one of the early people to ever get hired to play video games for a living. But this wasn't your, you know, the tournament kids that you have now. This was a desk job, right? I was working. I was a working man, you know, if you can call it that, I suppose. Sure. But I had I had all gamer friends. And then when that that finally ended, uh, I taught proprietary software in Boulder, Colorado for the rest of those 20 years. And during that time, I never got married, or had kids. So I had huge amounts that you're old enough to remember this. Um, you know, back when you could finish the internet, 
right? The internet was, you know, we had dial up and there's only so many sites that were out there. Right. Yeah. And so, and if you don't have, you get married or have kids, you have huge amounts of free time on your hands. So I, uh, I went down just about every rabbit hole you could think of. I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy there was. And I went through, not only did I finish the internet, <laughs> I finished all the conspiracies by the time I was, I don't know, 40, 45. And to where I was starting to look into stuff that I never would have looked into before, you know, you know, like, you know, are, is the Royal family lizard people? You know, <laughs> did, did Elvis have Bigfoot's baby and, and crap like that, you know, stuff that, that I have an opinion, seriously, I have an opinion on every conspiracy you could think of, but I would not look at flat earth. Flat earth was just stupid <laughs> because yeah. everyone, it's the only thing we debunk to children, which should be a flag in itself. It's like, why is it the only thing that's like, Oh, Hey kids, I know you're just old enough to form a conscious thought, but it used to be flat. Now it's a globe. Globe's going to sit in the corner of your classroom forever, right? Right below the American flag usually. Yeah. And again, a wonderful reinforcement. The CIA pays top dollar for that sort of conditioning. And uh, that's so I, I didn't look at it. I didn't look at it. And then finally, in um, tw summer of 2014, I, I gave up. I was like, all right, I, I, I'm not getting any younger. I might as well freaking look at it. Right. So, I, so, but I, but I was on. And the only reason I even looked at it at all was I was looking at Hollow Earth theory with uh, Admiral Byrd. And he came up. And Admiral Byrne's like, oh, Hollow Earth theory. I like the whole Journey of the Center of the Earth thing. I already watched. I mean, everybody's watched Journey of the Center of the Earth movies. There's been those things have been around forever. Yeah. And that led me to Antarctica. And when as I was looking more, I kept seeing this whole flat Earth theory, flat Earth theory, and there were not a lot of people talking about it. And then, and and I was going, well, I can knock this thing out. This this piece of cake. And it, every, again, everybody starts out in the negative. Everybody hates flat. Earth. David Weiss would ban people. He probably told you that one, but he would ban yeah. people from chat if they even brought it up. It's like lifelong yeah. ban, gone. <laughs> it's like you bring up flat earth. Alex Jones to this day, you know, doesn't want people to talk about flat earth. I mean, he's just drag kicking and screaming into some of the interviews we did with him. So finally, I, I, I after nine months of looking at this thing, you know, we the the days turned into weeks, which turned into months, and and the beginning of 2015. Again, I had that Jerry Maguire moment. People think, oh, it's just a movie. It's not just a movie. It happens. Where I woke up in the middle of the night and I had the narrative in my head. I was wrestling with it. I was like, wait a minute. You know, if I go the other way on this, maybe I can get my answers. If I say, if I if I make a series of videos, well, we'll just start out with one video. I'm going to put it out there to the internet hive mind and say, hey, internet hive mind, tell me where I'm wrong. And so I, I got up at literally three o'clock in the morning and what was weird. And some people call it what prophetic or touched or whatever, but I could hear all the dialogue in my head, in my own voice, you know, the whole, the whole thing, paragraphs just, and I'd never had such clear writing before where I sat down, type, 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 type. And then the whole Forrest Gump thing kicked in. It's like, well, I'm done writing it. Might as well narrate it. <laughs> so I grabbed a stupid, you know, $20 mic, you know, gaming mic, because that's all I had and uh, recorded it. And then I'm like, well, I recorded it and I was like, add some images to it. It took me all day. I didn't know anything about video editing. If you guys watch the original, you can probably tell the way I cobbled it together. I mean, it's amazing. You know, it took me all day to make a freaking 10 minute video. And that happened every day for uh, a week. I made the first seven clues in eight days and it was cathartic. Meaning I could go to sleep, but I wake up, you know, pretty early, 5, 6 a.m. And I was like, oh, no, I've got another idea. And and I would I would write some more and then put it out there. And by the time it was done, I had a couple hours worth of uh, videos called the Flat Earth Clues. And I, as I was releasing them, things started to happen. Uh, people, again, people, you know who, you know, well, I, you may or may not remember who this guy is. You know, the first guy who contacted me was? Who's that? Matt Boyland. The the guy from the the really loud Canadian artist from the the Netflix documentary, uh, you can't. A lot of people don't know he's because he didn't make a lot of content. But he was this really loud, really eccentric guy who who tried his luck with acting. He was a comedian. He was an actor out of Los Angeles, but he's from Montreal, Canada. Um, B o y l a n, um, Boy Boylan Boylan Boylan, and uh, he contacted me after like Clue Two. Talk about good instincts. And he and he and he's like, yeah, you know, I like what you're doing, blah blah blah. And he had some ideas about collaboration, but his head was all over the place, so it never really happened. But yeah, he was literally the first guy that contacted me, 
and then uh, it just kind of started snowballing. So there you go. That's my my little journey. How I how I got here, and that was eight years ago. And here we are, three books, documentary. I don't know how many conferences. I don't know how many meetups. Uh, and again, another conference coming up. So, I mean, this was one of the events. I mean, this is one of the biggest events that changed your life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It, without without sure. question, that's saying something coming from, from where I was. I mean, you know, I was, you know, from running a legal fireworks operation in camp, on campus to becoming a professional video game player. This is an octaves above that. I mean, this, right. this, because this, because this affected other people. No one cares if I won a video game tournament, right? Trophy, I can show a trophy to all sorts of people. No one cares. Uh, the fireworks thing, it's an interesting story, good at parties, but that's about it. But if you go out and say, hey, you know what? Flat Earth. If you say that seriously, <laughs> like, and like not ironically to people, you'd be amazed the ripples it, it creates. I mean, it is oh, the most me. polarizing two words I've ever seen in my life. To the point again, where where you and I were 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 talking before the show, every it was so polarizing that the the rumors got around the um, the social media world, and everybody was like, "Dude, you want to get a bunch of quick hits and amazing amount of comments, you know, polarizing comments, ten times the the comments you would normally get. Do a freaking flat Earth video. Don't take a stand, or if you're going to take a stand, go against it and watch what happens." And that word spread around to where. Um, I mean, again, you name it. I mean, I knew when PewDiePie did two of them that I was in trouble um, or the fact that Logan Paul, and I was one of the only guys I knew who he was at the time, uh, showed it, you know, tried to punk one of our conferences. And then the very next conference in Dallas, we were punked by Jimmy Kimmel. And it's like, OK, now we're we're, we're going into territory. We, we were we were going flying without a net most of the time. So, but again, it was, that's, that's the sort of thing that it generates. And I, I, I do love it, but the, it, yes, it has changed my life forever. But at the same time, all I really did was say yes, where a lot of people didn't. And, and I get criticized a lot. At least you didn't, you know, when you came on, it's like, are you an agent? Do you work for the government? Which people have accused me of for so often. And, and I try to remind them, I go, you know why I get the interviews? You know why people get a hold of me? Because they put my name and my phone number out there. It's yeah. not hard. Now, again, women can't do it because men are idiots, but it's amazing how many guys, again, still use, no offense to you or any people you know, um, still use complete aliases and don't put it, you know, you want people to get a hold of you, the media, what I try to explain is media is lazy. Not necessarily yep. you, but I mean mainstream. If mainstream was, say, hey, we need to do a story on a flat earther, if that, whatever intern or low-level producer, if they can't, they're all they're going to do is do a quick search. If they can't find anybody in the first 10 minutes, you know, they're, they're going for the top of the list, whatever's there. They'll li literally type in flat earth interview and see what shows up, which is, again, I'm happy that Dave is doing as many as he does. Of he's course. killing it. My gosh, he's doing like 20 a week. Yeah. Yeah. He's that. Well, I mean, he, I don't even think he even knows how many he's done. I definitely know he's into four figures, uh, you know, over a thousand interviews. Oh, sure. the, but the difference was, I, again, I wouldn't trade places with him when, when <laughs> it comes to this is that he would contact people or he would have people contact people you know right contact just about every podcast you could think of the problem with that is you know so when when people contact me they want to talk to me they're generally curious and they don't want to they don't want to attack me most of the time we'll see how tomorrow's goes we'll see um but most of the time they don't want to attack me because they again they're they're worried it's like oh crap we we attack him who else are we going to get um when david goes when david solicits people you run into occasionally podcasts that will um uh, they'll be in a um in one of those moods you catch somebody in the wrong mood right it's like hey hey frank you want to talk to some flat earthers oh yeah i want to talk to some flat earthers <laughs> right i'm gonna you know, give him a piece of my mind and he they do they come after him and he has developed a very very thick skin to the point where his interview style has has changed he has become what i call like a, a gypsy science teacher what he does it's it's really clever in a way but i know i know it wasn't planned it just it was just a survival instinct which was he figured out that um, the bet, you know, the best defense is a good offense. So he will remind people very quickly on how much they don't know about science. Right. 
And it's a it's a great line to where I, I'm stealing some of that stuff even now, which is, you know, I'll, I'll you know, I'll go to I won't do it as abrasive as he does. It's like, you know, do you know how fast the earth is, spe- you, know, you know, spinning? Do you know how fast it's going around the sun? Do you know how fast the solar system is flying sideways? Do you know how fast that, you know, the the galaxy is, is going through the universe? And and the point he gets to, it, you know, eventually is, you know, it, after he reminds him, it's like, hey, you don't know all of these things. Right. So why are you defending it? Blindly defending heliocentrism. Why, why are you defending a model that you don't know? Yep. Right. You are making a massive assumptions just based on you know, all you're saying is the model. Right. It's like, well, you can't just say the model. You can't just say science. And you definitely can't just say gravity. So but but again, that's what I love is he puts them on their heels enough to where, yeah, he's still going to get pushback. But but they will they, that kind of is humbling in a way because it's like, oh, crap, I didn't know all these things. I'm really surprised that more people, again, media is lazy, that they don't listen to at least one or two. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they're ready for them. Memorize some of the factoids that we had to, to memorize to where if you because if, if you knowing that at least you can come back and and but while sorry let me let me back up just a second if you sure. as you're knowing these things as you're relearning all these little science factoids you all of a sudden realize hey wait a minute as you're doing your own math yourself yeah you know, you're or you're working out the 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 system you're like hey that doesn't make sense how how is this happening if if again we make massive assumptions the the, the let me end with this the the Truman Show line is so very very true, which is we believe the world that is presented to us. If somebody of a, in a higher authority you, that you think is smarter than you, which you ne- should never make that assumption, uh, uh, immediately. Uh, if if they say, "Oh yeah, the world is something," you know, we're not talking to mecha- about a mechanic telling you that's like, "Oh, there's something wrong with your radiator," right? You probably believe him. He's been working on radiators a long time. But if you have, you right. have somebody that says, "Oh, hey, by the way, the sun is 93 million miles away, and it's and it's so many thousands of miles wide. It's it's, it's this massive thing." Even though they've never been there, we've never had probes sent there or anything. And, you know, they're basing it off of books, which are based off of other books, uh, the Tesla line. You know the 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 flaw with science is everything is stacked on top of each other and everybody that goes one more rung up they never check the base they never check the core foundation that it was based off of he goes by the time you get up like five or six rungs it's like it, it's meaningless because nobody checks anything below it they just make the assumptions like well the science that i am working that i am climbing on top of that's got to be right okay really you sure about that it's like just lazy anyway sorry no, that's that's great, hundred uh, percent. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. Um, I have noticed just within the last three or four years yeah. that the the term flat Earth has not been quite as divisive within the truth community, and uh, I was shocked to see that when I started this podcast, the amount of numbers that we were getting and the responses. So, do you think? Uh, I've said for a long time. Yeah, uh, I do think that they. And I'll ask you that question later. Who was they? Sure. But do you think they overplayed their hand with the COVID narrative to the point where they accidentally woke a lot of people up? Because I have seen, uh, I get emails all the time. And one of the common emails I get, Mark, is COVID woke me up. I saw the lies. They, they continuously lie. They try to bribe me with a cheeseburger to take a vaccine and, you know, the, the joint for jabs and just the three years of ridiculousness to where I think people started to understand that maybe they are lying to us. Do you see the connection between the lies of COVID and people waking up? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, the the COVID thing, unfortunately, and I don't want to get you in, into too much trouble, so nope, I'll try to be not as, at all. as, as Whatever you want to say. Here. Well, no, I mean, because if this if the audio goes up on YouTube, I don't want to flip the sensors. So I'll say shots and I won't use the word, you know, I'll just say Vax or VAX or whatever it is. Um, It woke people up from our standpoint. It stunted us in one sense because we couldn't do conferences anymore because the uh, we couldn't find venues that would that would go without a mask. For the most part, we couldn't do a national conference. We definitely couldn't do anything international. Um, 2019, for example, we were freaking golden 2019 we could do no wrong i mean i did conferences in seven different countries uh and and you know did an endorsement i did a mobile commercial in freaking australia it was really it was awesome oh yeah we were doing i mean there were uh, let me let me sh- tell you how quickly how harshly things can get closed down um i had gone to london to do a conference right in in uh, uk and then came back a producer 
from a morning television show called me and said hey we need you to fly back out to london we're gonna have you do a show it's like really from seattle we just got back it's like don't worry we'll pay for it it'll be fine so i you know bounce off of iceland and and go over there again and then come back and as i'm back and somebody else calls me up and they say hey we'd like you to do a um a mcdonald's commercial in london uh i go really i go how's that gonna work and they go oh because we have pancake day here and you know it's round and it's flat. It'd be awesome. We'll work the graphics in. It'll be solid. And it's like, oh, this is great. I mean, seriously, it was going to be. If you thought that I caught crap before, if I would have actually done a McDonald's commercial, people would have crucified me. But uh, it, still would, been... it still would have been yeah, worth it. <laughs> I, yeah, it was like sell out. <laughs> and uh, I, no, I, I've told people, I go, look, you if you tie me to a chair and throw pies at me, right? And I get to say flat earth on camera. I don't care what you do, as long as it's still flat earth based. In fact, in fact, the uh, the mobile commercial, they even tried to do a take with me where I was renouncing flat earth. And I said, sorry, I can't even do it as an outtake. Cannot do it. Um, so but when I got back, right, you know, I, and I knew because as I was flying back, as I was getting on the plane back from the um, uh, the London thing from the morning show there was a, a lady with a clipboard walked up to me again, talk about your foreshadowing movie moment where she looks, she goes, she goes, so have you been to China in the last two weeks? And I go, I go, <laughs> I go, you know, I didn't know anything. I was like, no, why? And she goes, no reason. Check. Uh -oh. <laughs> she walks away. And then of course, you know, but then the borders closed. So, I mean, so everything was ready to go. And then all of a sudden, yeah, sorry, you're not going to London because nobody's going to London. And that was it. And then, you know, three years later, um, now, did it stunt us? Yes. But at the same time, uh, because, again, human nature, you know, people ran out of things to watch. You know, literally, I mean, how many people never would have thought I would have run out of things to watch on Netflix, right? You know, it's like, it's like to the point where I, like, today, I think I've got a season and a half left of Supernatural, which I had okay. never watched People don't understand that's 15 season kids, right? That is all. And that's 22 episodes a season. That is a huge catalog. And I'm yeah. going through it because why the hell not? I got nothing else to watch. So what else, what else were people doing? Well, punch up YouTube on your television and start going down rabbit holes. And so people were getting woken up to a whole bunch of things. Why not? Because, you know, it's different now because everybody else is home. So you're recommending to other rabbit holes to people. So flat earth, came into it and so they they slowed us down in one sense but they gave us broader broader exposure in another to where now everybody knows that the flat earth is a thing beforehand they knew the term but they didn't know what it meant now it's a thing to where um uh i was telling somebody recently that uh, you know i've done a lot of school interviews which david doesn't get to do i talk to classrooms they call me up and really? i go and i it's like how I go, how exactly am I talking to a classroom, right? And they say, well, because uh, we watched the documentary. And I go, what? It's like, oh, yeah, it's re it's required. It's on the syllabus. It's wow. Like, what? And, and, and the reason is, is because once it's on Netflix, and Netflix is generally, you know, uh, safe, you know, unless it's got an R rating. It's like, no, that's mainstream media approved. And so it's like, no, 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 we're just, we're not showing them anything fringe on YouTube. We're having them watch a Netflix documentary. And and so I talked to so many uh, classes that would I mean, so many classes that would say the same thing. So, like, oh, yeah, well, I, we were required to watch the documentary. I mean, I, David and I just did. Um, uh, there was a girl two weeks ago from uh, Sweden. She's doing her dissertation on it, not the documentary, but the flat earth in general. And she's not the first one. So now, yeah, so it's 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 permeated everything. So the the pushback, yes, of course, there's still going to people, the average person going into it's still going to go into the five stages of acceptance and denial and anger. You know, it's still out there. And, and we've got some dedicated trolls, but I think some of the trolls are just trolling us because they can't flip. You know, once you're dedicated troll and once you have your established viewer base, you can't right. flip because you'll lose the base. So now they have to be a troll forever. That's right. And I still think Joe Rogan, to an extent, is one of those guys. He was a truther, and then he was given a big payout to get away from the truther community just before we came into play. And Flat Earth would have been so fun for him. And so I feel bad, you know, because he'll he'll bring it off and off comments. He'll he'll throw it a guess. He'll try to be the the antagonist. 
But I know full well that uh, back behind closed doors, there's all sorts of people that uh, are, in, again, closet flat earthers that just can't say it because they don't want to, for either sponsorship reasons or their base or both, they don't want to, they don't want to deal with the, the hassle. Yeah. You mentioned Netflix. It's funny. I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but one of the CEOs, the guy's name is Mark Randolph. He is directly related to Sigmund Freud. And even funnier enough, Edward Bernays, who I don't know if you know who Edward Bernays is, but he was the king of propaganda. Oh, no, I, I watched that documentary, that that multi-part series about him. Yeah. yeah. And he was one. I, you know what? What I remember about that series is he had such the deeper he got in, the more he learned about how to market to human psychology the more he found humans contemptible. He, yeah. You know, the line's like, they're all idiots. And it's like, just tap into that idiot, you know, part of it, and you can make them basically do anything. And it, you know, sorry. He, yeah, the father of mar modern marketing was brilliant. Wasn't, yeah, he the he, one, wasn't he the one that that helped, um, God, was it getting women into smoking? Yeah, torches for freedom or something like that. Yeah, brilliant. They all busted out their cigarettes and lit them up. Yeah. Yeah. And he was behind putting fluoride in water. And of course, the, the, the again, who would have known that the, the again, one, 20 percent of people smoke anyway. But the, one of the biggest pushes was uh, just in, implementing um, a pack of cigs into um, military rations for World War Two. That's right. Foxhole, yep. you're hot, jacked up. You got nothing better to do. Better smoke up, Jenny. Yeah, trust me. I smoked a lot of heaters when I was in the military. There you go. <laughs> And yeah, they are trying to kill a lot of time. They actually had, they kept them in their MREs through Vietnam. And I think the mid seventies, they cut them out. Um, well, you know, they had to after that. Oh yeah, for sure. For yeah. sure. Oh, which, um, well, sorry. Let, let me throw one more thing in there before, uh, before Please. you get into there. It's a little quick story. Um, it it's tied to the whole shot thing. Cigarettes reminds me of this because I, I you know, people say, oh, you know, you don't take the, uh, the whole pandemic very seriously. I go, no, I don't. And the biggest reason for me believe it or not, was something silly, which was, I go, you know what it was? I go, um, smoking on airplanes. And they, and they go, what do you mean? I go, well, you know, they banned it, right? They banned smoking on airplanes. And they, they go, why? I go, because secondhand smoke, nothing stops it. And, you know, even your lungs don't stop it. Hence, secondhand smoke, right? <laughs> you know, you breathe in smoke, you breathe on your spouse. Hey, your spouse got cancer. Who not? Again, not picking on smokers. But the point was, is that planes just use furnace filters, you know, as, as filters to circulate the air. And and um, pilots would tell me, it's like, yeah, they make coffee in the back. We'll smell it in the in the cabin, in the cockpit in less than 90 seconds. It's really fast. You know, they have to keep the air, you know, circulating as fast as they can. Right. And they go, what's your point? I go, my point is, is that if the furnace filter, if the, the filters in the airplanes can't stop smoke and virus particles are way, way smaller why didn't the airplanes shut down? The That's airport's right. never closed. I mean, no. yeah, the borders closed, but that was an international border thing. You can fly domestic all day long. At no point did LAX close <laughs> or, or New York or, or any of these. I flew in these planes and they all said the same thing. And, and hey, what I try to get to people, I go, look, I go, you can wear a mask all you want, but here's, here's the kicker. If you can, if you're wearing your mask and you can smell something, that's it. Right. I go, I, I go, odor particles are way bigger than virus particles. There, there's a reason why firefighters, when they go into major blazes, they have full blown oxygen tanks. They might as well, they might as well be wearing scuba tanks because that's the only thing that stops smoke. So I go, if the mask makes you feel better, hey, great. Does it stop people spitting on you? Yeah, sure. <laughs> but that's it. That's all, that's all it does. So again, when they require them in planes, oh, that was a, that was a tough year. Did yeah. Well, one thing I'll take to my grave, I'll never forget is seeing somebody. And I think every now and then you'll still see one or two uh, people in their cars by themselves wearing masks, man. Yep. That was just. Oh, well, yeah, you don't want me to get started on that. But um, yeah, there's there's two things that happen there. One, you know, you've got the comfort zone people that even when the administration changed, you know, went to Biden and they rolled back the mandates, they didn't care. They don't trust anyone at this point. It's like, no, no, this is my comfort zone. This is my wheelhouse. And you That's can right. tell those people are going to be wearing masks outside for the rest of their lives which isn't really that much different if you ever i mean you're in the military people it, i was used to it kind of because it was people always coming from japan yeah and always... people got off the plane it's like what's with the mask and people told you oh it's japanese people they wear masks you know there's a percentage of japanese people that that do it the other part which is <laughs> i don't want to pick but it's um it's unattractive people 
which is um, unattractive people that realized, you know, they got more compliments when they were wearing the mask because it only shows their eyes. I mean, how many people have ugly eyes? Let's be honest. Uh, they're like, oh, no, no. I, I'm actually better with, you know, with a, with a mask. Kind of like me, but I'm better with a hat. Whenever a producer tells you, it's like, oh, dad, dude, you should wear more hats. It's like, yeah, I get it. I'm wearing more hats. Yeah. My mom said I have a face for radio. That's why I do podcasts. No, 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 no. You got a You got a very wholesome face. Uh, I like your face. And you got and you got a bright smile. Well, thank you. Yep. Um, I want to get into a few questions for me. And it sounds like for you. Yep. Um, now, listen, we're, we're always constantly learning. But uh, Flat Earth was one of the last rabbit holes where I went down. And obviously, you told the same story. Yep. I'm I'm really shocked uh, i've interviewed tons of people on this program we bring just the listeners on and they tell their stories there's a lot of them mark that this was their first rabbit hole they don't know anything about 9 11 <laughs> and i'm every time i hear their story like that uh, i am shocked it, it's just amazing for me i think i had to take that you know stairway you know with jfk yeah. the moon landing the baby steps in order to lower my guard yeah. um but that is something I'm seeing more and more often is flat earth is their first rabbit hole. That is shocking to me. Well, that's good and bad. I mean, I was worried back in the day. I, I was kind of joking with some some of the early people. It's like I was worried that there would be a percentage of people that would freak out, right, if this yeah. happened. You know, I mean, like lose it. It's like, it's like are we going to seize like some people <laughs> like put on full blown suicide vest and starts like flat earth, click, you know, stuff right. like that. But, they, but it never happened, which was great. Um, apparently, simultaneously, when you shrink the universe down to a, a big studio apartment, you also create this comfortable sense of, oh, wow, but it's got purpose. So I don't really have to freak out after all. But the process, when it shrinks down, you panic, right? And it's like, it's getting smaller, it's getting smaller. It's like, oh, hey, it's not that bad. But getting there is a, is a scary, scary situation. If you learn about Flat Earth first, Boy, that's got to be a hell of a roller coaster because at that point you understand that you because, yeah, if you learn about flat earth first, then you realize that anything can be lied about anything. Yeah. So anything below that, I mean, come on, every, everything. And I, I feel bad for the 9-11 people that would give me crap because like you're taken away from the ultimate conspiracy, which is 9-11. I'm going, dude, that was two buildings, three if you count building seven, which I do. Right, uh, <laughs> this is a whole nother thing. Um, but it's just, it's one country. It's a tiny part of one country. I go, Flat Earth is the whole world. I go, nothing can compare to that. It's always going to be second tier to Flat Earth. However, when, again, once you realize that Flat Earth is a possibility, then everything that anyone ever tells you, you can't discount, right? You know, again, I, I people I would just throw out of the room before, again, the lizard people, right? Or, right. or somebody would come up to me. It's like, dude, I'm pretty sure that Elvis and Bigfoot were like an item, right? <laughs> or Hannah would be like, dude, just, just cut back on whatever you're smoking. But now I'd be like, you know what? I got a few minutes. <laughs> what do you have? What do you got? Bring hit, it. Hit me with that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of envious in a way for people to get into Flat Earth first because then uh, everything's a possibility. That being said, their trust probably uh, of, of authority figures probably goes out the window really quickly. To where you jump to um to what you know the term the auto hoax thing yeah which you get into that i mean david weiss is in that every once in a while which is and i don't blame him which is that everything on the news is a lie right everything and and that shouldn't be your default stance but at the same time if you're playing the percentages it's probably the safer bet because yeah. it, it, again, people forget kind of like the the line which uh, I'll, I'll I'll jump back and forth real quick, which is because I ask people outside of this country, I go, why do you think the Americans went to the moon? Why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? Right? I know you know our Americans. Um, you watch Fox News every once in a while, or used to? I haven't in years, but I used to. Okay. I'm, I'm, um, one of the commentators on there, uh, Dana Perino, she's still on there now. She used to okay. be a pre yeah. press sec press secretary for the Bushes. One of her lines was really really scary. She goes, I believe in the moon landings because I'm a patriot. She said that absolutely what? in that. I know. And she said that straight to the camera. I knew exactly what she was saying, meaning whatever the government tells you, that's Listen. what you go with. I mean, you're from the military, you know, that line, right? Bro, like, we, we have a like, saying on this podcast that patriotism is a hell of a drug. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like, no, we're, we're looking out for you. Therefore, whatever the government says is for your own good. Right. That's right. And so, and I get it, right? And inside this country, it's like America waved little flags and we're, we're great. 
However, you know, I ask people in other countries, it's like, why do you think the Americans went to the moon? And they always say the same thing. They said, well, because it was on television. And the American media wouldn't lie. And I'd look at them, I'd go, Ooh, you don't know us at all. Oh, we lie man. about everything. In yeah. fact, we have layers of lies. America is the, the greatest show on earth. The operative word there being show. We're That's pretend. Right. We're, we're make-believe. I mean, we're a fantastic empire. We're we're the um what was the line I used in one of my things? I go, we're the Michael Jordan of air empires. Very showy, very flashy. Are we the greatest, you know, empire that ever lived? No, it was the Roman Empire. They crushed right. people. And the, the big difference, and I I was kind of irritated that America didn't go down this line, but I know why they didn't. Once you once you start down the path, you can't. Uh, with the Romans, the public demanded it. It's like, who have you conquered today for the empire? Are you doing your part for the empire? I mean, that was their thing. They waited for you. It's like, what have you brought us today? You know, oh, you you you, oh, you took out half of Europe. That's fantastic. Who are we gonna, you know, hang in the Colosseum? Um, with America, we we try to do it and and still pretend to be the good guys. And uh, I I get it. it's a, it's a good good thing and it works. You know, our propaganda machine is is top notch. So, um, what was the initial question on that? Uh, I don't even remember now. I'm I'm so hooked on your your story. <laughs> it's sorry, but point. but that's but that's sorry. Oh, the patriotism thing. So um, uh, and the moon landing. Crap. No, I think it was just patriotism in general. Ah, we crap. were talking about the first rabbit hole was the flat Earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, if yeah, one yeah, once people get into it then again the the authority can't be necessary oh yeah it's the auto hoaxing thing which is um everything on the news you oh, sorry thank you now I'm back to where i was which was the um uh you, people forget that the news isn't objective objective journalism i don't know if it's ever truly existed uh you guys want to watch a wonderful movie that that you know that stands the test of time it's citizen kane going all the way back to where and this was based on a true story which was it, <laughs> american like like we reinvented it or something which is if a very wealthy person is getting accosted by a newspaper what's the answer well you just buy the freaking newspaper and you can do whatever you want they're never going to write a bad story about you again transition that to radio transition that to television transition that to the internet and and you can do anything you want so the corporations that are out there again the, the, we we try to to take the the naive nature of people away which is uh the, the news you know the whether it's fox or nbc or abc they are owned by a parent company which is owned by a parent company which has different interests and those interests they they will dictate policy all day long that's what they do and they pit they do in this country they've done a wonderful job of pitting people against each other um yeah um, last thing before whatever question you have next, which is mm -hmm. the 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 question I have for people. It's like, oh no, there's no no such thing as fake news. It's like, okay, I go resolve these two statements. Everything on CNN is absolutely true, and everything on Fox News is absolutely true. Yeah. You can't, you can't. If you depending on which side you vote, and most people don't, or most people do, I don't. Um, the the you know both sides accuse each other of lying all the time. Yeah. Um, we know full well. Last part which is we know full well, or you know full well, whoever's listening, that there are conspiracies out there, right? In uh, business and politics and sports and entertainment, and yes, even journalism and science, right? The difference is, is that there's media sanctioned conspiracies, which aren't conspiracies at all. They're either scandals or they're tragedies if somebody dies, right? Anything that isn't one of those two, anything that they don't want to dig in more about, that's a conspiracy and that's fringe. But come on, I could spend all day on any one of those topics, business and politics. I mean, come on, there's corporate espionage. We know about that. The politics, they lie for a living, for God's sakes. Yeah. Um, sports, <laughs> come on, because there's nothing ever weird happens in sports. You know, no one's, there's no scandals in sports ever, ever, ever. Um, what was the other thing? Entertainment, <laughs> come on, all day long, all day long. Harvey Weinstein, that wasn't an isolated incident. That's just one guy. Right. And then journalism and, and politics. Well, you want to talk about, oh, who is the journalist that uh, said he was getting shot in the helicopter over in the Middle East? You know, the shots. Oh. Are Remember him? And he had to do an apology. Tom Brokaw. Was that his name? Yeah. Was it was it Tom Brokaw? And um, I think it was Tom. Oh, crap. You'll have to remind me later. 
And then uh, and and science, come on, happens all the time. And by that I mean every scientific version of anything. I mean, God, they just look at all the scientists. Oh, God, it, uh, Going all the way back, uh, most of the scientists have cut corners over the, the years, right? Lead paint, lead gasoline, uh, asbestos, by the way, which is a great product unless you work in the factory, then it's not so great. Um, or how about all the scientists, again, not to pick on smokers, that 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 took the money and said, oh, yeah, cigarettes, absolutely fine. Right, lie under oath. Things like that happen all, and don't give me a start on the, the pharma industry. You know, science science has conspiracies. Right. Yes. A hundred percent. So anyway, sorry, I, I go off on tangents. And it's interesting. When Actually, when I did that um, episode on Edward Bernays, I actually played a lot of those commercials from the 50s. You know, my doctor chooses camel sure. <laughs> shows the, the, the doctor lighting up a, a long dart. Money is oh, God. money is such it's I shouldn't say it's the root of all evil, but it it allows bad people to do bad things. And that's a line from a movie. And, but but it's so true. Uh, I mean, if there's enough money in hell, there was a movie I just watched recently called um, Painkiller. It was uh, it was a multi part series about the um, the OxyContin mm. uh, thing, which was people forget that back in the look, if there's money in it, we will be people will find a way to make it keep going uh, all the way back to again, back in the days when they sold cocaine in the drugstores. That's right. Or or the fact that Coca Cola is called Coca Cola, right? And and I, I here's a quick story most people don't know, and that is I remember uh, doing tech support for a company that uh, they made the uh, high fructose corn syrup for Coke. They were one of the companies that did this. And I go, yeah, I go. Remember when they used to do you know coca leaves, you know, and the and he goes and the guy at the other phone, it goes, what do you mean used to? And I go, uh, what are you uh -oh. talking about? And he goes. He goes, dude, he goes, once it's below the FDA's minimum threshold, you can do whatever you want. We still put coca leaves in it. In fact, he goes, during the process, we have so much cocaine paste that we have to put it in a vault and the feds have to come and get it to destroy it. What? On a like a bi-monthly basis. Wow. I go, what? And he goes, yeah. He goes, it's always been in there. It's never going away. I mean, he goes, because, but it's below the FDA's minimum. So it doesn't count technically, right? If it's below that, whatever it is, you know, you've seen sure. the things where it's Every like parts less per than, million or whatever. Yeah, yeah, parts per million. It's like, but it's still in there. And and he goes, yeah, it is. Like, <laughs> great, that's that's awesome. Uh, or again, the the movie uh, Painkiller. So what I thought was interesting was they figured out a way. You know, once heroin and coke, be, you know, became controlled substances, it became illegal. It's like another company stepped in. It's like, how can we? repackage heroin into a pill right and then push it past the fda can we do it and can we get away with it without people you know how long can we do it be before people you know figure out what we're doing and they did it for years years in the you know in the 90s and the early 2000s it's it's a fantastic looking you don't want to do, do the whole history of oxycontin there you go one family figured it out they uh figure it you know and again what did it take all they had to do was bribe the right fda person and that's right that's it and then you're you're good until cities start collapsing you know until the crime rate starts jacking up and then then america has always been notorious for taking things too far always you wonder why if you ever look at british media why they run so so many stories on america you know because we're the ultimate british spinoff you know america we they look at us over there and they go what have they been up to now they don't run stories <laughs> on canada like this it's always america I mean, people forget we used to sell. I mean, this is too old for most people. We used to sell machine guns in the hardware stores back in the 30s. Literally sold, but you could buy a hammer and a machine gun at the same time. <laughs> and why not? Why wouldn't you? Yeah. You, you could order guns on through, through your comic book, or I don't know what your comic through books, the mail. but you, you catalog, catalog. You right to your home. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, fully automatic weapons, uh, and yeah. you know the Roaring Twenties. That was no joke. The you know, the the shootouts were amazing, you yeah. know. And, and the cops had them, and the and the and so when like the the later gun stuff happened, you know, in the eighties, you know, the big the assault weapon thing. It's like we've already done this at one point. This was just on a on a slightly different. So what what had happened was all the cops had switched back to revolvers, and then the drug dealers started picking up, you know, machine guns, different places. Yeah. 
and it's like and well the cops are like hey we're um we're not doing well in these shootouts <laughs> so and we're not going to basically what they figured out was we're not going to give cops the, the your beat cop machine guns anymore they're not going to keep machine guns in the trunk so we're going to we have to ramp down the 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 assault weapons and i i got it i mean come on i was you're old enough to remember what was happening in the 80s it was nuts it was uh, absolutely freaking nutty what was going on did you do you ever go, go to the gun shows in the uh the early 90s uh yeah sure occasionally yeah absolutely yeah i went to one up in uh near seattle and i was there when like six atf agents decided to just remember this was before any of the legislation was going down so they showed up just to kind of walk around and see what was going on and the horror in their faces when they were walking through you know because we're talking about a fairgrounds barn or two just <laughs> jammed to the freaking yep. bristling with weapons and there were you know gang members and bikers and merchant marines and you know off-duty cops and everyone's just buying stuff you know within seconds there's no paperwork there's no nothing it's like the system we built is completely useless this is this is happening everywhere it's like yep pretty much and that's why they were like scrambling just freaking i got it i mean i remember you know picking up a i think i picked up a ruger pistol once brand new in the box uh in like under 30 seconds it was that fast guy had a cardboard sign you know on his back it's like hey, 300 and something bucks yeah sure boop, boop, boop. done yeah out the door you go up there you go so yeah, yeah. america god bless her <laughs> we, we do stuff by the way fail fail army the channel i yeah, recommend it awesome. for people it's like look you don't want to see americans on a regular basis screwing <laughs> up there you go jeff foxworthy oh. hold my beer anyway sorry yeah. go ahead yeah, I, I watch that a couple of times a week just when, when I'm feeling bad about myself. I exactly. Me too. <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> and and by the way, I, and I don't want to do racial profiling, but you know what I see when I watch a lot of that? And, and I, I bet you, I bet you this happens out there. It's white people problems. <laughs> It's like white people <laughs> doing people <laughs> really dumb things. I am sure there are other demographics out there watching Fail Army going, wow. <laughs> <laughs> why why would you do this yeah that is hilarious i want to get to come to some of these questions okay what do you got all right so first one i got a couple from me and a couple from listeners and a couple audio questions this okay. one is so flat earth clues which uh delves into the possibility of our human civilization actually being inside a truman show like an enclosed uh a Truman show like enclosed system yeah. and how it's been hidden from the public since 1956. Yeah. So and that's in your I think your YouTube uh, about in your show. Yeah. Why 1956? 1956 would have been the um when the last major navy operation was happening down in Antarctica, which is also known as um was 54 55 no it's 55 56. Uh, operation Deep Freeze which was uh, by Admiral Byrd, his last mission, by the way, before he died uh, of whatever cause. And honestly, you know, watching him on television, he was a problem because <laughs> he was too casual on camera. He was too good on camera. And he let things slide that even nowadays would make people, you know, producers wince, which was, you know, I knew when he made that line where he was talking, it's like, oh yeah, there's coal and there's, there's oil and uranium. And he stops, he goes, I probably shouldn't have said that. It's like, oh God. <laughs> Do you imagine the handlers? You know, oh my watch, gosh. watching Brandling. You know, it's like, oh dude. It's like, come on, you can't, you know, and then he's like, oh, well, you know, worried worried that we could be fighting about this. So um, yeah, so at Operation uh, 5556, what I what I believe was they were still looking, you know, for the better part of 30 years for a, any sort of evidence that there was an outer barrier. Which would make sense, which would mean that you put the outer barrier, you take the coast of Antarctica, and then you go inland thousands of miles, right? Because they'd have to be thousands of miles because it, it took you 30 years, planes and refueling stations and flying in the ice and flying and flying and flying. And then you give up. I think at one point they're like, well, maybe either we won't find it or maybe it's just not there. And then, of course, Murphy's Law during Operation Deep Freeze, they found okay. something, but they weren't going to talk about it. All we knew was when they were done with Operation Deep Freeze, they immediately started working up the uh, the paperwork for the Antarctic Treaty, the only unbroken treaty in the history of treaties that said, yeah, everybody off the ice. No one's going down there. Uh, we're basically militarizing it. No one, no country can own it. 
And again, the the big red flag for me was that um, not only um, are you not allowed to go down there, set up company, you know, no matter how much money you have, which <laughs> huge red flag, which but the other one is you're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the big one, which is you have a big oil and gas company. They are notorious for running like full page ads in newspapers back in the day. You know, it's like, how great you want to, you know, influence public opinion. You run full page ads because sure. they can't miss it. And it's like, how great would it be for British Petroleum to, to be down in Antarctica? It's jobs. It's security. It's Britain. Right. You know, fly the Union Jack in the back. <laughs> yeah, sure. So um, but they weren't even allowed to do that. And I knew exactly why, which was like, oh, yeah, that would be standard protocol. You know, you you go to these companies, you say, OK, so you're even thinking you're just the top guys. Right. Whatever it is, the top guys and say national security. Don't even think about it. Don't even talk about it. And when you retire, give them this card <laughs> and have them call us. And then we will come in and we'll do this over again. We'll, we'll repeat this. And that's what happened. I mean, every country that came online as an economic power had to sign this treaty. No one's allowed to question. No one's even tried. You know, if you think it's like China, why didn't they storm the ice? In fact, the one of the, the the big flags also was the only people, the only country that was down there during World War II, which was Nazi Germany. Everybody right. was gone and they were down there. They were working hard again because Indiana Jones was not just a movie. There are some countries, and I will hand it to Germany in this sense. There's an old saying called all's fair in love and war. Geneva Convention, yeah, it's a nice idea. But the truth is, whatever wins the war, period. Right. If you're if you are ruthless enough that, that you, you've heard the military saying, which is the difference of all sides being equal, it co usually comes down to the per what the person that's willing to do something the other guy is not. Right. You know, who's willing to take steps that who may even be unethical. But then again, we're talking about flexible ethics here. So right. if Germany all of a sudden, you know, if Germany's looking for the Holy Grail, if they're looking for Frodo, you know, Frodo's ring, if they're looking for Harry Potter's wand. If that will turn the course of the war, oh, yeah, they're going to find it, right? Again, people thought it was a great movie. It's, it's not a movie. They're looking for these things because right. they they hope to God. It's like, look, if we find a weird wand that will incinerate a battlefield, oh, yeah, we're using it. We don't care. We, even if there's blowback, you know, it kills half of our guys. We're still doing it. So they're down there and they're setting up shop. And then, you know, Operation High Jump right after the one, the second they signed the papers uh, over in, um, was it Tokyo Bay, uh, for the surrender of Japan immediately. It's like, oh, yeah, uh, Richard Byrd, okay, get on a carrier group. We're sending a full-blown carrier group with infantry down to Antarctica. Why? Oh, science reasons. No reasons. Just go, right? And he knew I was going down there. And and whatever was done, um, it, was, it was over with by the time he got on television for the uh, Long Jeans Chronoscope uh, show in 1950. Four? Yeah, that sounds about right. And uh, yeah, so there you go. That's amazing because that was actually my follow-up question. I think history very much is in line with what you were talking about, David Weiss in the news. Uh, I think it's uh, at best our history and, and the news is a little bit of truth covered with a lot of lies. And yes. you've, you're, you're a truther and I'm sure you've gone down the World War II uh, rabbit hole as well. And yeah. um you know, Stalin was a great guy, um, right? <laughs> um, but it's amazing. Here, you know, we're on the verge of World War II, and he's got folks in Poland and over here, and they've got a fleet called, you know, down in Antarctica, New Schwabia. Yeah. But, you know, they don't teach that in high school. Nothing to see here. There's nothing. You know, Antarctica is oh. this little continent on the bottom of the earth. I mean, when you stop and think about these things, it's like, how how are you not processing the next step? You know, there there's a Germany, this small country, has cool. a, a submarine fleet down there uh, working, um, you know, furiously in an in Antarctica. And oh, by the way, in South America, at the bottom of the continent, they set up. And to this day, yeah, you look, they have German cities in Argentina, and they still have the same structure and, and the people down there. There's a lot of weird things going on there. Oh, Mark. Germany, people don't get, and I think in alternate timelines, you guys want to watch a fun series. If you've never watched it, uh, watch The Man in the High Castle. I'm really surprised they actually made that series because, yeah. but there, but that's based on books, which was why did Germany lose? And I think in a whole bunch of other timelines, I think we're living in one of those rare timelines, you know, like the Doctor Strange one, where where we actually won because the that war was over. 
just so you know, before Pearl Harbor, this thing, it was done. I mean, uh, Russia was burning. Europe was conquered. Um, they were just toying with England. And, uh, you know, Germany was just mopping up. They knew full well what they were going to do. They were going to eventually take Moscow. If it wasn't going to be that winter, it was going to be the next one. Um, that would be that. Then they'd have the, the Russian resources. Um, they'd obliterate uh, Germany. And the whole point was they weren't going to fire a shot on America. Not a single shot. They were supposed to, because there were so many German citizens over here. My family Absolutely. being one of them. You know, cousins Mi fighting cousins. Oh, yeah. Minnesota and, um, uh, and Wisconsin, huge German communities. And I mean, they were all over the place. And so they were going to run dual flags and that was it. They were America. Why would you ever burn them down? Right. They were the, they were the crown jewel. They, that's who they were going to take. The only thing that could get in the way was if America turned against them. And then all of a sudden Pearl Harbor, oh, miraculously, you know, the, the problem that would, the, the conspiracy was too big for most people back then, which was Pearl Harbor gets bombed on a Sunday, you know, and, and Japan then, you know, there because Japan's allied with Germany, you know, in a in another timeline, Germany probably shouldn't been allied with Japan. I mean, kind of it was silly anyway. They were going to take over Japan anyway. But anyway, Men in the High Castle, interesting series. Uh, but yeah, um, world every war that we have fought has been again. Um, everyone knows the history is written by the winners quote, but I think Napoleon's quote is actually more devious, which is uh, he said history is just lies that are agreed upon. And, the, you know, where it's like, OK, we've won. What's the story we're going to put out there? Right. Because we don't want to. And it's mostly I don't want to I don't want to pick on women, but it's mostly for the women because women do not like sending their sons to fight for things. However, the old tricks are the best tricks and people, human beings will fight for revenge from now until doomsday. It's the old That's one right. of the oldest tricks in the book, which is you walk up to somebody. You've done it yourself, I'm sure. You walked up to somebody, you hit him in the back of the head, and when they spin around, you point to your best friend. <laughs> That's right? right. He it's did one it. One of the oldest tricks ever, and it works almost every single time. All you have to do is keep a straight face, right? Or or sell it. It's like, oh, dude, he totally hit you, and it's like, ah, you know, people fight for revenge, and and again, you know, nine eleven, uh, every American war we've ever fought. I mean, seriously, the Civil War, the Spanish American War, uh, the. Um, the Revolutionary War, which was basically the French people. But again, we the fact that most Americans don't even know, it's like, no, we had to buy the country back from France. Yep. Go ahead. We they won the war for us. It wasn't us. We were, yeah, we were there, but it's come on, the Louisiana Purchase was massive. And it probably would have been even bigger, except they hadn't explored any further. It's like, That's hey, right. buy buy the country off of us, you know, back <laughs> from us. You owe us. Then we'll split Canada between England and <laughs> France, which makes no sense. I'm still trying to figure that one out. It's like, how did England get that part of Canada? <laughs> and France got the other one. Seriously, Quebec? Really? It's, uh, anyway, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, yeah. you're good. By the way, Philip Dick wrote the book, um, The Man in the High Castle. And if you want to... Oh, The Man from Electric Dreams? Uh, no, The oh, Man Philip, in the High... Philip K. Dick? Yes, yes, yes. He also he wrote, wrote some, the I think, the miniseries uh, Electric Dreams. Electric Dreams and Scanner Darkly. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, he's got a mind on him. Yeah, I again, I am really surprised the Man in a High, High Castle, as I was watching it, it got made. Yeah, me too. I'm like, wow. It's like, it's like okay, so you're not going to let Iron Sky get distributed in the United States, right? Even <laughs> though I don't really, I mean, the trailers. Can you imagine, again, I'm not picking, but can you imagine the Jewish community watching the trailers for Iron Sky and calling each other's like, so we're not going to let this actually play in America, right? Because <laughs> this is horrifying. Uh, but you know, one of the little things uh, that he did, which absolutely was, I think, dead on, was um, in Man in the High Castle. Uh, again, the general public doesn't know this, how they had concords. Concords were the basic form of travel. And it's like, yeah, we can make passenger planes that crack the, the sound barrier. However, for aesthetic reasons we don't because we don't want sonic booms everywhere and there's some livestock concerns and crap like that um but with germany they're like yeah screw that we just want to get to point a to point b as fast as possible that's therefore everybody's flying freaking concords that's right i actually agree with the logic it's like why would you want to fly anything else and you you're perfecting it while you're doing it it's like why are you flying subsonic if you don't have to but whatever it was a, again fascinating fascinating series it got a little weird towards the end but <laughs> whatever
actually it would kind of got by the time it got to the end it was kind of delving into the truth which was okay what timeline are we living in because again they their timeline they won and our timeline we won but they didn't really go and like japan was going to share it with them oh no. <laughs> no, no 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 zero chance of that happening no they were going to get to japan eventually why because if you didn't again not to be brutal but if you didn't look like german people eh, you weren't going to be part of the empire yeah that's just how you were so I have a question from a listener. His name is Joe, and he asks, uh, can a video game simulation of globe earth help prove flat earth or vice versa? Um, he, he'd heard, you know, obviously he'd heard that you've been in the, the video game community for a while. Is that yeah. something that has crossed your mind, putting together uh, a video game to kind of drop breadcrumbs for flat earth? I don't, I don't have to. And that is, a, that's a, that's a great question, by the way. Uh, thank you to Joe, um, which is, you know, yeah, because I came from the video game world and a lot of people don't know this which is most of the video games, 99% of the video games are made on a tabletop flat scenario, meaning, oh yeah, there might be some valleys and mountains and stuff like that, um, but the edges line up. And I don't care what you're playing, um, whether it be um, Warcraft or Fortnite or GTA or, or whatever. I mean, Minecraft being the most blatant example. I hate that game. It's so terrible. <laughs> I don't and, get and, it. And I hate, I hate the fact that Lego didn't go to that guy immediately and just buy it out. Right. It's like, dude, this is a Lego game. You could own this right now. And and they lost so much money by the time they figured it out. But but the games are made tabletop flat. And what's interesting is also the sky is also um it's it's fact that the, the graphics models that they use to create the sky are called a sky box. So yeah, when you're looking at the sky, you might see planets, you might see a moon, everything seems like it's curved and maybe even dome like, right? But engineering wise, computers don't like curves. In fact, they can't technically even draw curves. They can only draw right angles. So, which okay. is why pixels are squares, right? Yeah. You know, it's engineering. Any engineer will tell you this. It's always square, 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 right? It's Legos don't have really, you know, you don't have lay, curved pieces. So you can, you can make spheres, but when you zoom in and zoom in, it still comes down to, you remember th as things get pixelated, right? It's the Oops. old term. So when it comes to the uh, um, the skies and the video games, they're all skybox systems. Everything's angled off. Everything's squared off. So if this place was a simulation, by the way, then the dome, the snow globe that every culture has been drawing since the dawn of civilization is an illusion. And then outside of this, let's say it is, you know, the what, in fact, what you, you've got the uh, Orlando Ferguson map behind you, which I love, yeah. you know, and by the way, I was a huge fan of that um, because uh, I like the, I just like the whole feel of it. I like that it was made in the 1800s. I even like the, the whole roulette table feel, you know, cause it really kind of looks like a roulette table. Indeed. <clears throat> but people immediately called me up and they said, yeah, you can't use um, roulette table anymore when you're defining it. Even though, again, I love the map. I've even seen the, um, the, the, the being blown up original. I think it's in South Dakota. It takes up like half of a room, which is really awesome, which is why that every picture you see of it is so high res. Um, but they said, you can't use a roulette table. I go, why not? They go, because all the numbers of a roulette table add up to uh, 666. I go, what? That's, right. That's not true. It is true. It's absolutely yeah. true. And it's like, 100%. wow. Okay. That's not ominous at all. <laughs> so yeah, um, video games, the, there's only one or two that actually use uh, uh, spherical modeling and i don't even remember which ones they are but and the reason why they do it is one it's easier to code why would you code in a sphere it, it's tougher to do why why would you ever try to work in the, the sphere calculations because that affects freaking everything and the Absolutely. other is the average gamer won't notice it i mean I've, i played um warcraft for 16 years and i looked out at the horizons over the ocean right and everything and you're looking over it and yeah there should be a curvature of the earth but you're never going to notice it like you tell people, oh, is there, you know, if you ask them back in the day, oh, is there, is there a curvature to the Warcraft horizon? Most people would say, I don't know. You know, they, they go whatever way you were trying to lean them towards. But there isn't. It's absolutely tabletop flat, you know, especially over water. And uh, so, yeah. It, so trying to make a game. Now, there, we are making a game, but it's it's kind of delving into it's still a, a flat game, but it's not doesn't have the. It's more of a informational trying to get people to go to different websites and stuff like that. It just came out. I don't even know the name of it. I just found out about it a couple of days ago. So. Thanks for that explanation. And thank you, Joe. Can I play one of our two audio messages for you? Sure. All right, here we go. And this is from our friend in Transylvania. <laughs> Hello. Question for Mark. 
What do you think about the Virgin Galactic tourist space flights? Keep doing what you're doing. Since searching, we will find the truth eventually. There you go. I love his accent so much. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> he sounds he sounds like a cross between a, a vampire and Gru. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, that's so great. I almost expect him to say blah blah blah. <laughs> I want to suck your blood. Um, okay. Um, when it comes to I, I won't just uh uh do um I'm not picking on him. That's that's a great accent. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I don't uh why stop at uh Virgin Gal he said Virgin Galactic, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that, why that, stop that, there? Like why, last week or two, yeah. Please. No, every every private space agency has huge holes in the plot, some better than others. Virgin Clack, they're just a token on the side of this whole thing. It's like, oh, we're going to go straight up 60 miles. Uh-huh. Okay, first off, even telling people they're going up 60 miles means you're probably not going up 60 miles. And you're saying, oh, we're going to space. They're not even saying the edge of space anymore. They're saying space. What a load of crap. Um, then you have, what, Blue Horizon. I think that's uh, Amazon's. They, they haven't done anyone, any, anything, anybody, any favors. Um, but anyways, uh, but uh, Virgin Galactic. Oh, no, Blue Horizon, they're the one that goes straight up and straight down. Virgin Galactic, I don't even know what the hell. Oh, they're doing that plane, that rocket plane. Yeah, and then it, the plane falls off of the rocket. And yeah, yeah, the yeah the rocket-powered kind of plane. Around. Yeah, again, if people want to <laughs> shell out money to, to go up at a certain altitude, that's fine, but you're not... You're, what are you doing you're not you you don't even have um you have a very limited i mean if you want to do a parabola the cheaper option would be to do the uh the hollow air, airplane for the uh the parabolic flight the vomit comet where you right, get up right. to a certain height and then just nose down and really then you it's not anti-gravity you're just falling without wind that's all you're doing it's not anti-gravity at all it's it's an illusion it, it's it's stagecraft really which is which is kind there's of there's no such thing as gravity so it can't be anti-gravity <laughs> oh yeah and yeah and then spacex of course uh i don't even know where to start with spacex i mean they are a united states military puppet arm of you know, arm of the military they 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 shouldn't be doing what they're doing the, the people say, oh, it's a private space for him. It's like, what are you talking about? It is run by NASA. It runs off NASA facilities. You know, the, the fact that NASA even allows them to use Cape Canaveral and Kennedy, right, as their pads, like, that's direct competition to to what they're doing. And and yet, again, the, the, the general public believes that, and, you know, they've turned, they've tried to turn Elon Musk, who I, I don't say I hate a lot of people. And again, I don't hate him as a person, I hate the idea that they chose him. That's what the, that was their option. Yeah, that's what they came up with. Again, the line from uh, Armageddon that where Bruce Willis is yelling at. It's like, and this is the best idea you could come up with. You're NASA for God's sakes. <laughs> it's like this is it. This right. is what you got. So when I mean they tried to turn Elon into Tony Stark, and he's he's used for all sorts of everything. And again, because the 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 general public has such short term memory, they don't understand that he hasn't done anything right he no. didn't create paypal no. I, I, my uncle came to me and you know looked at me and i shocked him with it it's like i go you realize he didn't found tesla right and he just bought it right and at the same time he's he i guarantee within two years he's going to uh, ab, ab, ask the average kid on the street oh yeah he founded x no he didn't he bought Twitter and he only bought Twitter because he had to buy Twitter because his lawyer said, no, they're going to sue you because you said the stock price was perfect time to buy. And it's going to be cheaper for you to just buy it and then destroy it <laughs> rather than fight the legal fees and get nothing. That's so, right. Oh, and, and sorry. One, one more. Let me throw one more. Since we're doing yeah. private space companies, let's throw in the one that happened this morning, which was India. <laughs> oh my gosh. So India, you know, so yeah, so t Russia supposedly tanked a probe on the yeah. on the moon, right? Oh. Supposedly crashed. It's like okay, no proof of this at all. You just said, oh yeah, we launched. Okay, fine, you launched a rocket, and then some days later, you say you tanked it on the moon. Wow, sounds totally legit. India was right behind them, supposedly. the The graphics are, I'm looking at them right now. I don't know if you've seen over, you saw any of the headlines from today. The the graphics are, I don't know, pre 1998. They're they're horrible. 
a little better than Pong. <laughs> yeah, a little, little better. I mean, they're they're Atari graphics, and yeah. they even added stars to the graphics. And then the the single shot that they used was was terrible. But here's not here's the part that that got me. The part that got me was the insulting part. Not only did you say that you landed on the moon, India, right? When I think high tech, I, I'm not picking on India. Look, they do a lot of tech support. I don't think India, right? It's Japan. It's it's German engineering. It's the United States. It's every once in a while, uh, you know, Italy. India is not what we think about no, for a space program, not a, right? No. And not only that, but they said they did it for $75 million. I'm going, what? That's what we give NASA one day, right? <laughs> yeah, that's one day's worth of NASA. I go, not only that, I go, I go, I go, super yachts. You can't even get a super yacht for $75 million. Minimum for a super yacht, even just a hundred footers, two hundred million dollars, right? Yeah. One, you know this from the military, one F-16 costs $63 million. And that's not even fully loaded. That's not that's even right. fully rocketed up, right? You want to throw in some sidewinders and stuff? Yeah, then 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 you're up awards of 70, 80 million dollars. But these guys supposedly went to the moon, $75 million. They landed it, took one snapshot, said, oh, well, we did it. And of course, we were there the entire time. NASA was the consultants on all of this. We ran the trajectory. We ran the computer. Oh, it's horrible computer animations. So, yeah. Hey, but again, yeah. all of India bought it. They're like That's... clapping little little flags in the air. Yeah, wasn't that funny? Their premiere, whatever, sitting there with the flag. like just Oh, kind of... that drove me insane. Almost fell out of the chair last I know that's the image you want to use even you wouldn't even put Biden with a little uh, flag doing oh, that no, it's not, I mean no. that was that was a carnival puppet holding that flag I mean I looked at his eyes I'm going there's nothing there he no, is lights on, but nobody's home he's like just wave the flag man <laughs> in fact it may not have even been live he may have pre-recorded that oh 100 for sure why, why you know the, the the guy holding the flag why why the hell not just run that run that video we're just gonna sure. keep it on a loop. <laughs> it's gonna be a, that, that will be a gift before it's over, by the way. Oh yeah, that'll be a gift, and we'll make it a TikTok video as well. Yeah, with right. some three Stooges music with it or something. Yep. Uh, since we're talking about these things, who, who was it? Okay, here it is. Uh, Flat Earth Tom from Kansas asks, "How high do you think the firmament is at its apex? You know, at the center above the North Star?" Uh, eight miles. No, uh, I nobody knows to to be sure. sure. Uh, all I know is it's way lower than most people think. Do I? The only reason we uh, we draw it as a snow globe. In fact, if you go into Google and type in ancient cosmologies and hit images, you'll see what everybody drew. It's really weird that they all drew about pretty much the same thing, which looks like a snow globe, but it doesn't yep. have to be that high. So it's probably more like a shallow sports stadium. And I say that because human te our human technology doesn't go that high. So uh, the average, um, I mean, most of the, like most of our civilization lives between sea level and one mile up. That's 90 something percent of our population. Then commercial aircraft cap at about 50,000 feet or 10, 10 miles, roughly. Uh, spy planes, if you believe what they tell you, cap out at roughly twice that, 20 miles. So even if it was a thousand miles up, that'd be way more than, than we need. To, to do what we need to do, especially when it comes to rockets. Because you remember all the rockets, you want to look at telemetry, look at time lapse, any rocket, you know, it goes up and then just goes horizontal so fast. And no one even questions it. It's like, where's it going? Well, it's going to go down there and then it's going to go up some more. It's like, it why didn't it go up now? No one wants to talk about it. Um, so could it be 3,000 miles up? Maybe. Could it be less than 1,000 miles up? Maybe. Don't know for sure. Uh, the the rockets that we that we fired up there, you know, the highest amateur one that I think ever went up was less than seventy miles. Uh, you know, again, if commercial traffic, if if the average, if ninety nine percent of the population doesn't even go up to ten miles, then how high, you know, how high do you have to make it to to make it to pull it off? If only the military knows how high it really is, then you can you can keep it a secret for a pretty long time that the reason why our population has not figured this out the biggest reason is because we don't have flying cars and by the way on a side note we're never going to get flying cars i'm not oh. talking about the unified field cars i'm talking about those pieces of crap giant drones that they're talking about which is basically just a helicopter right with a yeah. whole bunch of little wings uh, it's like no dude again fail army you want you want to <laughs> see why we're never going to have flying cars type yeah. in car fail into youtube and watch an hour worth of what happens and then you're going to tell me you're going to give that same population 3d flying <laughs> no no <laughs> uh... no i mean come on we can't we can't stop people from drinking and driving 
No, you would have these things falling in your backyard. Oh, my gosh. In your backyard. Oh, yeah, it would be the, the, the crashes. And plus, you're guaranteeing fatalities. I mean, yeah. and the, 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 the collateral damage would be horrible. So, yeah. Anyway, if we had flying cars, if we had unified field cars like UFOs, then, yeah, we figure it out. And I also, by the way, think, uh, I don't know if you're a biblical guy necessarily, yeah. but the um, the Tower of Babel story, one of the shortest stories in the history of stories, but I, you know, I expanded on it in the clues, which was, I think the one that the very, very early version of us was too good in that, okay, we made a completely unified people that had a single goal and high intelligence, high degree of, of engineering. And they figured out what this world was immediately. And what do you think that they did? It's like, oh, yeah. So we need to go up there. We're, forget about the flying cars. We're going to build a freaking bridge to have, right. you know, to, to get out of here. And again, I love the story because it rings so true. Because whoever was overseeing the world, let's say it was God or one of God's subcontractors, right? It's looking down going, ah, crap. <laughs> That's not going to work. They're going to make it. Yeah, we've already done the math. It's not going to take very long. So, okay, scatter, scatter, scatter. Languages, languages. Yeah, get rid of that tower. <laughs> Once we we gotta we gotta redo this because it was yeah. So, but but yeah, if we had flying cars, I think every I think every civilization has their chance, and ours was one of the slower ones because if you remove the unified field engine out of the equation, which is the UFO engine, right? which doesn't need aerodynamics, right? It, it just goes, you know, like an Etch-a-Sketch. It can go any any direction it wants at just about any speed. And it doesn't matter if it's underwater. It would replace all vehicles. See, with ours, the reason why it's so slow is we have to have a vehicle for just about everything we do, right? We have cars, we have airplanes, we have submarines, we have big trucks, we have tankers, we have all, with UFO, it's just one engine, you make it any size you want, you can do anything you want. Plus, you can weaponize it on top of it. So if we had one of those, yeah, we'd figure out this place really, really quick. But we didn't. And 5,000 years later, I think we're just about there. And, yeah. and you, by the way, you know why I think the, the biggest the, the biggest thing that did it for us, the reason why it, it got so easy to detect, uh, why you couldn't detect it 30 years ago, but you can now, which is why most people got into Flat Earth, was HD technology. That was, that was the big thing, what? which was you could see HD cameras. Who would have thought? Cameras that you could see further than you should be able to. And people understood that. It took them a little while. It's like, you know, looking at it, it's like, hey, you see that boat? Yeah, you shouldn't be able to. Really? <laughs> it's, and and that just, I mean, I didn't tell in the clues, you know, I, I'm not going to take credit for it. Nowhere at any point in the clues that I tell people to run to the beach and start shooting long distance uh, photography. And that's what so many people did. And they would call me. And they again, why they told me, it's like, oh, yeah, that Orlando Ferguson map, you can't use it. And I go, why? Because it's, it's tabletop flat. I go, really? And they go, yeah. I go, how do you know? It's like, because we were shooting over water. And I go, and? Water's flat. It's like, I had to learn all these things from, from observers. They were running out and doing this on their own. I, I don't even know where the inspiration came from. But it spread really, really fast, which was nice. Indeed. Indeed it did. Uh, where was my next question here? Actually, let's do another. And by the way, thanks for that question, brother. I, he's going to be on the on the podcast soon. I look forward to that. Next one is uh, a, a good friend of the podcast, Jim. Hey, George, I got I got something for Mark Sargent. I, I <clears throat> I'm a fan. You know, uh, I don't remember who I started listening to first for Flat Earth, but I know I know um, I know Mark Sargent was in there, and. Uh, you know, I just want to say, because he's a humble guy, and I know he don't like to take credit for anything half the time. It seems, it seems like when people try to give him some credit, he, you know, he, he he's just a humble guy, and I, I love him for it, and I'm proud of him for it. I think it's, I think his attitude is awesome. I just want to say that uh, I appreciate his humor and the way he handles conversations. You know, humor in a flat earth conversation is awesome to me. I laugh about it all the time. Um, it just, I don't know, it keeps, it keeps you from being, uh, crazy about it. It's just a uh, look at the humor side of it. And I know I got a minute. So I, I just want to say, appreciate you, Mark. And, uh, I like the way you, uh, throw in humor on different things and, and, uh, we appreciate you. I'm out. There you go, brother. Well, that's awfully nice. First, uh, I, I wonder if he has a, like a lifetime membership to NASCAR. Um, the, the second would be. <laughs> Uh, let's see the humbled part. It's like, bow down, lowly dog. 
How dare you say I'm humble? Yeah, well, I, 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 I give credit where credit is due, and I try not to take credit when. Uh, and Flat Earth has really changed that for me. Tr Flat Earth has changed my attitude toward a lot of things. Well, one would be, um, I'm never going to do anything malicious to anybody ever again. Uh, mostly because now that I know that we're living in some sort of structure, <laughs> the high degree that that we're being watched you know it's like you know someone's got an eye on you maybe not necessarily hovering over you but definitely a parent on the sofa looking over the top of the newspaper type of thing it's like what are they doing right um and uh uh what was the other thing he said oh adding humor to it uh yeah if i'm not laughing i'm crying so uh it there's there's a lot of bad things in the world but i think there's a lot of very humorous things in the world and i try to find the silver lining whenever possible and if that comes off as humor then then that's what it is uh try to the the tension in movies i love tension breakers i love it when the movie's super super tense and then somebody comes in and and figures out a way to break the ice you know and usually that's just a little perspective thing you know some some little innate some small comment that that out of nowhere that people are like okay okay now we can now we can kind of move forward without you know, dreading the worst. Uh, granted, the powers that be, and you know, when people talk about you know in the last three years what we we've, we've been through and and the great reset uh, that people talk talk about all the time. Uh, don't forget that there's still I still believe in the plan. You know, I still believe in the design and everything for a reason. So whatever's happening to to us now, yeah, it doesn't seem like a lot of fun, but there's got to be a reason for it. I don't believe in randomness. Uh, I believe in the the Einstein quote from years ago, which is, and I won't go into it too much necessarily, uh, which is that God doesn't play dice. And I get that. I get that more than anyone. And it took me a long time to to figure that out. Uh, but the the short version is is that there's a plan here. So there you go. 100%. But thank you. I appreciate I appreciate the compliments and uh, and thank you for that. And I'm not no, I'm not going to take credit for for much pain. I can only tell you that I was there in the beginning. Uh, with two other guys, Eric Dubé and Matt Boylan. And uh, the three of us, we did not see eye to eye at all because they're completely different personalities. Matt was basically insane. <clears throat> and Eric was um, and is he doesn't like sharing anything with anybody. So if you're not with him, you're against him. And uh, I know how that goes. And it's like, all right, no, well, then we're going to be at odds and he's going to spoil things by saying that I'm a government agent for the last eight years. And he has never backed down from that. And for eight years, you know, I keep saying, fine, prove it, prove it. You're saying this, you live in freaking Thailand. How do you know that I'm a government agent? What proof do you have? What video, what audio, what email? What? And the only reason he said, I was there when he, when he came up with it. I've got the email from Matt Boylan. They said, look, you're with us or we are going to discredit you. I still got the email from 2015. And, you know, and, and real quick, which there was a little thing that happened in the um, da, 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 the Netflix documentary, which most people missed, which was there was a hundred and something seats in the back of that uh, that first conference that were empty. And, and it's non-refundable conference, right? People paid. It was sold out. And what happened was Eric Dubé convinced ODD, you know, ODD reality. Yeah. Uh, channel he convinced he, he's like tell your guys whoever think they're going to go to the conference to not go because it's just government agents it's all anyone on stage is government agents and i'll be damned if those people burned those hundreds of dollars you know each one of them and they did not go wow. and it was just this little thing and it's like but it's the power of uh the power of media and the power of persuasion it's like all right so Eric, I don't know, I don't know how he does it, but Eric's channel, I mean, he's been burned down several times. It keeps coming back. Again, I've, I've, I've never, I, for me, I don't have a personal beef with the guy. I just don't like, you know, I, I told him and come on, every producer has told me, it's like, you can't make a whole bunch of flat earth videos and then make a video called Adolf Hitler is the greatest guy in the world. You can't do that. You can't mix the two there's it's never going to go well and and then you act surprised it's like oh why was my channel destroyed by youtube i'm going to start up another one do the same thing and he, like today he's got like 190,000 subs it's like all right wow you want to keep doing the same thing it's fine
I'm just warning you. The producers. He uh, well, sorry. Last thing on that on that point. Uh-huh. He was supposed to be. I'm sure he's been told this. He was supposed to be in behind the curve. Absolutely was supposed to be in in it, and not not because of me, but because of the producers. Okay. And and once they, I go and I was the one that showed it to him. I'm going well, and they 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 said, does anybody have skeletons in their closet? I go well, you might as well know, you know. And I threw him the you know Adolf Hitler video, and they and they said. Is there any chance we can get him to, to pull that down? I go, nope, <laughs> not for this project. He's not. And he didn't. And every pr- producer since then, in fact, one of them said, look, you may want to call him and tell him and say, uh, no producer, you know, when you go up the chain of producers, no, pro- no, no project's going to work with you because of what you're doing with that. And, uh, and I said, it's not going to do me any good to tell him he already knows. So anyway, there you go. Appreciate that. Yep. I do have two more questions left. Uh, one is something that I was, uh, I get a lot of these emails that say, uh, my life was wayward. I had turned from God. I, I was doing this, doing that. And it's incredible to see that people come across, whether it's the podcast or your channel, I get so many messages where flat earth completely changes people's lives to yeah. where uh, they're brought back to God and they're, they're living their lives different. And, and that is the most powerful, humbling. When I open up those emails, I, I get teared up to think that I'm yeah. just some guy in Delaware who raises chickens, um, you know, put this podcast together. And, and, and for me, that's why I had to do this podcast separately. I told you in the beginning, it is, it was divisive on that. I, but it was such a passion to me that I had to do a separate podcast. And right. obviously that was God's plan for me. And now I'm doing this and we get emails all the time. And I can only imagine how many messages you get about how you've changed people's lives. Yeah. Over the years. And it's not, again, it's not me. I, I did not change people's lives. I'm not um, uh, a part-time cult leader, uh, even though, even though we have all the earmarks of it, which is really weird. I'm really surprised the media hasn't jumped on it because, but, but I suppose because we don't have the flags that go with it, meaning uh, we don't have a compound or a Bible or robes or <laughs> chanting uh you know this you go to the conferences and, and i'm really surprised that more, more people haven't said that however to your point about religion very very true over the years um i have had so many people in fact i'll give you a, a quick story uh before the pandemic we were doing christian flat earth conferences right yeah. and i wasn't even invited to speak at most of those because i didn't quote enough chapter and verse right most of the conferences we go to I, I you we knew we were doing something right when after the first conference half of the the people said it was too christian the other half said it wasn't christian enough it's like okay so we 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 apparently were right down the middle there but there was this uh take on the world conference uh they had done for a number of years before the pandemic and i remember they're doing this uh this round table towards the end and rick hummer relayed this story to me the the guy that's emceeing the las vegas conference and he goes Somebody, I don't know if it was Rob Skiba or Robbie Davidson or one of the other guys, but they all, everyone was in agreement. They go, we have never seen any device or tool that has brought more people back to the church than flat earth has. No single thing has been able to do this. And the reason is, is it gives people that extra few single digit percentage points that reinforces their faith that they may have lost or fallen away from. So if you were 90% sure, you know, 90% in the camp, it's like, yes, you know, you know, I, you know, I believe in God or higher power or whatever, you know, whatever denomination you're looking at this just by the default structure of it, meaning if we're in some sort of building, then it was built, it was created. Now you may not know exactly who the creator is exactly, or, 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 or the, uh, the reason behind behind it but it gets you one step closer. You know, the, the joke again, the humor I would throw out at people that I would say, it's like, yeah, you don't know, you don't know who exactly built it. It could be one of God, you know, it could be God directly. It could be one of God's subcontractors, but at the very least you're one, st- they, you're one step closer to figuring out God's phone number, right? You're one degree closer. And that was enough for most people. They're like, you beforehand, they're like, oh yeah, I'm in. Now, you know, because it shrunk, remember I was telling you about the, how it shrunk down the universe. If the yeah. universe gets shrunk down to what's essentially a giant uh, Garden of Eden, right? 
I mean, just a big, big Garden of Eden version. Uh, I mean, you know, let's face it, the, the world without people is actually a really nice place. Right? It's people that screw it up. Take people to the equation works pretty well. I mean, as far as I know, again, not to steal that line from the Matrix, but, you know, everything uh, natural equilibrium is in there, except when you throw people in and then it just turns into a nightmare. Um, so, yeah, I, I got tons of those emails along those lines where people were were so happy and they weren't thanking me so much as they were. I mean, they thanked me for the way I explained it. But right, that right, they right. were so happy that the concept was put out there. And I would try to remind them, and I think Rob Skiba did as well um, in his website, which I highly recommend to people. If you're a Christian out there and you want to you know, go to testingtheglobe.com, which was so wonderful, and I'm so glad it's still up and his wife is keeping it there after his um, untimely passing. Yeah. Uh, but he was the first guy to go through it back in 2015. He went through the Bible with a fine-tooth comb. It was awesome. And he came back almost immediately and said, yeah, it's a flat-earth book. The Bible is a flat earth freaking book with one exception, which was he and he found it so fascinating. He said, Isaiah 40, 22, he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth, he goes, That's but true. circle is not ball. It's not sphere. It's not globe. In ancient Hebrew, it is not the same word. He goes, but he goes, I have talked to so many pastors that hang on to Isaiah 40, 22 by their fingernails and, and like it has veto power <laughs> or everything else. It's like really over Genesis. You know, you're going to you're going to use this over Genesis. And it's like, yeah, one shouldn't have more weight than the other, but they do. And uh, but it's mostly the fear. You know, most pa most pastors, uh, they're they're scared. You know, they don't want to. You don't want to come on. You don't want to sit up in front of a congregation of, I don't know, two, three hundred, five hundred people, depending on what group you're looking at and say, OK, so we're going back to the flat model. Because people mainstream has sunk their claws into so many of the people that they uh, they're afraid of the backlash, kind of like you when you got those emails. So, yeah. yeah, but I, I love I love the spirituality aspect of it. Again, the the fact that that it it turned me to where, again, I will not do anything malicious to anybody else. Now, that doesn't mean I won't defend myself. You know, Second Amendment, you know, gun control is using two hands. But uh but at the same time, I'm not going to go out of my way to, to to. I don't troll people. I don't even do practical jokes on people. So, I hate I hate practical jokes. I just don't. I don't like. So. Yeah, and, and you, you get those emails. It's you, and again, it's the flatter. It wasn't George that changed these people's lives. It was the them uh, finding flat Earth and them realizing. Yeah. Yeah, and they uh, had to thank honestly, they had to thank somebody. So it's like they would send me emails or whoever it was. And I'm sure lots of other people, you know, even the people that that don't quote religious stuff. I will say this though, I was one of the I was the first guy to delve into the religious side because the Christian community was writing me almost immediately as I was doing the clues. And they said, You are you are dancing around the God aspect of it too much. You've got you've got to address it. And at that point, I said, well, it was already in, you know, on my list anyway. So I'm going to bump it up. And I made a clue called They Are Hiding God. Absolutely. And, uh, it was it got it was received extremely well. And uh, I, I but I really I want to do it in a different way. So I did something kind of unique. And I was kind of hoping that 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 uh, somebody else would touch upon it. You know, I, I, I stretched the Tower of Babel story into the way I would see it if I wrote it as like a screenplay and, gotcha. uh, and I thought it, I thought it worked pretty well. So anyway, I'm glad I was glad that people enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank you for that last. And thank you. You've been very generous with your time. Oh, I, no, no worries. I appreciate you. I'm good. Appreciate you. Yeah. Um, the big question, um, well, you know, why the lie is the big question, but you know, we, we've, everybody kind of knows that, but who do you believe the hidden hands or the controllers are the people at the very top of the food chain here on earth that are pulling all the strings, uh, that are responsible for what you've seen over the last three years yeah. and, and for heliocentrism and everything that does hide God, uh, Oprah Winfrey. Nope. That's not true. Uh, good night, everybody. Great show. <laughs> uh, no, the, um, uh, you know that is that is a question that I have I have posed for a number of years. To I've thrown back at people. I go, the great thing about true power, if you know how to wield it, is that the rules are very very simple. Which is true power stays hidden. You cannot be, and that's a line from Napoleon, which I thought was great. Napoleon's a pretty quotable guy, not as quotable as Einstein, but still pretty quotable. He um he said that uh uh. 
he goes, they cannot, he goes, never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown. Right. And that was the curse of what he had to live with. He was a military general. He was a dictator and people knew who he was. The person you want to be, the curse of being the puppet master is you can't also be in the limelight. So you can't run the puppets and also tell people you're running the puppets because then you're also people again, people know who you are. They can't get you if they can't see you. So kings and queens and presidents and people like that, anybody can be overthrown if you know who they are. That's the whole point. Once because they're everyone's at that level of power is worried about the mob. Uh, there was an old quote and I or metaphor where they said the 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 general population is like this giant dim-witted lumbering beast that you absolutely did not want to get its gaze on you you know you want to keep it somewhat content but right. do not if if you're going to tick it off make sure it's not going your way and the only way to make sure is that they can't see you if you're invisible so long way around to this to answering this question that being said, people are all sorts of theories out there. If you ask the average cons conspiracy person to ask, you know, what's, what's your top 20 in order of importance, the, the, the groups out there that are controlling the world, you're never going to get the same 20 from people. And there's going to be heated arguments. It's like, okay, oh, sure. you know, is it the Rothschilds, the Bilderbergs, the CFR, the trilaterals, the Masons, the Vatican? The, it just goes on and on and on, right? There's also, you know, the, the skull and bones, you know, the, I mean, what you want to do is you want to find the oldest group. The oldest group is probably one that's running it the most. I mean, people say, well, is it the Rothschilds? No, the Rothschilds really got their big claim to power in 1812. The Waterloo. Yeah, yeah Waterloo. After, after Waterloo. Absolutely. They, uh, you know, which was a great scam. Oh, God, it was right? a great scam. So brilliant. Incredible. So freaking brilliant. Um, but again, that's that's fairly new money in the grand scheme of things. So when people talk about, oh, yeah, Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, I'm going, that money is so new the ink's still drying, you know, by comparison, I go, keep going back even further than that. I mean, um, the Masons, yeah, they've been around, uh, you know, the, the, the Mason story goes actually all the way back to the Masons and the Vatican have been tied together for a very, very long time. You want to look up stuff, look up the, uh, the signet of Solomon, uh, or, you know, the Knights Templar in going all the way back, but don't forget that the Vatican was the one that ordered the Knights Templar to look for the ring of Solomon's ring in the first place. By the way, the Ring of Power in the whole Lord of the Rings thing, yeah, not just a movie. It was based off of something. It's based off the of freaking Solomon's Ring. Uh, if you want to look it up, look at the Signet of Solomon, the, the magic ring that allowed him to control demons, blue demons on top of it. Brilliant. I mean, some, some wonderful stories there. Uh, but going back, you could probably, again, there's probably some rich and powerful families that are as old as Europe, but the Vatican has got to be the oldest. Because it's the remnants of the Roman Empire. Those right. guys, right? <laughs> the the empire that ran for a thousand years, that ran for so long, they forgot who they were. And they're like, wait a minute. What was our initial mission? <laughs> like, <laughs> right, take over the world. Right, right. Are we still doing that? <laughs> you know, they didn't even know at one point they had run it for so long. For God's sakes, the, the Roman short sword for military people out there, they used that for 600 years. Never changed mm -hmm. it. That's how good they were. And they were uh, they were they were humble enough to absorb anything, which I loved about them. Um, which was, uh, you know, if they came upon a, uh, you know, they're conquering an army, they came upon a catapult that was a better design than theirs. Hey, you know what? That's new Roman catapult. <laughs> That's what we're using. Every other catapult, they're using those. They absorb like the Borg. They just they were they were they were really good. So if I had to pick a, a power structure at the very top, at least in men, humans. I would pick the uh, uh, the Vatican, no, you know, just because they, you know, they they probably still have the stuff from the the Library of Alexandria, you know, the yeah. good stuff. Um, the, the I think they probably got most of the resources, and they probably don't have to worry about money, you know. The, you know, when you get up at certain points, the the money, um, it's just a number, you know. It's a it's not a question of if you can buy something; it's if you can topple economies and and change the world markets. Do I think? There are other beings out there that have influence. Yes, but I'm cautious in saying who or why, because I think there's rules to this place. And I want to drag. I don't want to drag this out, but I'll tell a story really quick about the um, the greatest UFO sighting of all time was not Roswell, and it wasn't Aurora, Texas, or anything like that. It was 1561 Nuremberg, Germany, 
You can look it up. There's a wiki page on it, which was uh, 1561. Uh, two giant space armadas just came into a beautiful April sky and hammered each other over Nuremberg, Germany for a straight hour. And then a third faction showed up, uh, a giant single black angular craft, and chased them away. <laughs> and then went off on its own and that raised so many questions i mean of course there was no science fiction back then so they had no context they thought it was a religious event but and in fact they drew it i mean yeah there was no photography in 1561 but an hour is plenty of time for any even the worst sketch artist to sketch the whole thing while they're while they're having toast and schnitz and globin because it's first thing in the morning (laughs) The, the, the question is okay who are these first two guys right who and why were they fighting and who is, again, the, who is the, there was a power structure here. You know, obviously they weren't supposed to be fighting because the third group, were they the cops, the big black craft? Were they the UN? Or who the hell were they? And what was the response time? It took them an hour? I could shoot a gun outside this window. There's going to be people here in under 10 minutes. And yet, yeah, for sure, you've got, you've got full-blown flying aircraft carriers just hammering each other for a full hour. So what I'm getting at is, there seems to be rules to this place. That do, again, do I think there are civilizations that are older than ourselves? Of course. I mean, you don't have to watch ancient aliens to figure it out. I mean, but they did help. Which is, come on, the 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 Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, uh, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, uh, sunken cities of Japan, sunken cities of India. We are not the first group to 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 be here. Our our unbroken history only goes back five thousand years. So, I think there's probably a prime directive in place which is whoever's whoever graduates from this you leave alone the surface group because they, they want whoever it is the rules is you got to um, act naturally right so if you want to pick off some guys in a rowboat or somebody in a forest or somebody in a mountain yeah it's fine you you don't get to land in the middle of indiana right and and you know come out and start taking selfies that's not going to happen because uh, you can't it's again prime directive i know i'm stealing from star trek but it's absolutely true you don't want to you don't want to mess with that flow so i don't think then again if people say well you know it could be demons at the top it's like yeah maybe maybe but it'll only be one or two and you're never going to figure out who they are if if they were talking to anybody they're probably talking to somebody in the vatican maybe which is sort of ironic don't you think yeah since they have a telescope named uh, lucifer right well yeah or the fact that it's the freaking vatican (laughs) you know well if you have a bean it could be why the reason why the vatican came out not too long ago and said oh you know we wouldn't have any problem with aliens and the whole alien concept. It's like, wow, it seems like an odd thing to throw out there. So do, do right. I think by two things real quick before we go, um, uh-huh. do I think that there will be some sort of alien agenda inter- introduction of a new, you know, old civilization, you know, painted, you know, project blue beam or however you want to do it. Sure. That seems like the logical step where we're going there. We're trying to escalate things. We're in an undeclared war with Russia. We have been, for some time using ukraine as a proxy uh you could russia's not going for it we're tr- we're trying to kick in a big reset russia is playing the reluctant villain <laughs> kudos to them for for not falling for all the the tricks that we're doing but my god it's getting yeah. ridiculous out there um but i also think that the, the one of the reasons what what might happen it's like okay what do you expect what what's the goal here you know what happens when so many people figure out about flat earth um, for me, it's not just the the hundredth monkey effect, which I do believe in. Look it up if you get a chance. Uh, you 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 know about the hundred mon- hundredth monkey effect, kind of. Hundred mon- real quick, call. which is um, an automatic update for a species. So the um, scientists, again, we didn't figure it out. Science scientists did. Where they uh, we were feeding potatoes to monkeys on a beach, and some monkeys were figuring out that if you wash the potatoes in a sand, you know, in the water, you can get the sand off it. It tastes a little bit. You don't have to eat sand. What happened was about the hundredth monkey and people the science is back it's oh it's a myth it's like you guys were the ones that figured it out don't tell me it's a myth you just don't want to admit what it is which was once they get to about the hundredth monkey all the monkeys knew it meaning it's not like they were watching each other to learn it they all it was a mass monkey update in fact it wasn't just an update on that island it was every monkey in the islands plural all of them even monkeys that were there were water you know could not absolutely we're, we're disconnected from each other all the monkeys now yeah. instinctively learn it. it's like oh beneficial upgrade totally see that so is it possible that humans could run into that same situation where if enough people kind of figured out where this was then would something like and i'll just throw out a term uh the babel i'll call it the babel protocol how's that so with the, the tower of babel right it was like it kicked in immediately and afterwards like okay so 
we need to put something in <laughs> for the later civilizations to where this ever right a threshold has to be put in to where if enough people figure it out and start looking up it's like okay i see what's going on here if enough people you know population figure it out then um, god has to step in or you know god subcontractors have to step in or the caretakers or whoever and say okay next <laughs> we gotta we, we gotta rotate over to the next the next group because i do think that it is kind of like a <clears throat> school senior class thing where we eventually the this this civilization has to graduate like anybody else and as with any graduating class you what's the line you don't have to go home but you gotta get the hell out of here because we have another class <laughs> right so it's like okay <laughs> where you're gonna go subterranean or you're gonna go off to another continent or you're gonna go outside the dome or whatever it is that's that's what i'm that's my ultimate goal that's what i'm gunning for because why not it's like come on we've taken this as far as we're gonna take it we we take it to the nth degree there's nothing new here so there you go well done where can people find you are you are you doing shows on tuesday night yeah i just did one uh, on, on last night so last night. um yeah. the the reruns are on my channel uh it, i'm not going to give out all the, the social media stuff because i don't run most of it so i don't even know what's out there honestly oh um, okay no but, worries but but i no no it's it's fine the um uh two things i want to encourage uh if you want to find my stuff just go to the um uh, just type in flat earth mark into any search engine you will find me you will eventually find the, the rabbit holes that will get to me i don't care how you get there eventually you'll get, you'll get there um the other thing which is you've got it up on your screen uh if you haven't done it already uh you know because we david and his guys worked really really hard on it is the the flat earth sun moon and zodiac clock app it has done amazingly oh. well because it's visual you know, it's it, people, a picture is worth a thousand words and I have used it myself. It's like people want to say, well, what's it look like? You know, I can describe it audio all day long. It's like, it looks like this <laughs> right here. And I regret it. I did not have it for like the first year that he had the app out. I felt bad. It's like, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get it. And then finally I got it. It's like, oh man, I should have always had this. So, um, uh, and, and, and last, last but not least, uh, if you guys are looking, you know, there's meetups, we do meetups in different parts of the country and different countries all the time. But the big conference this year is going to be in Las Vegas. So if you're curious, uh, just type in um, Flattoberfest 2023 or Flat Earth Conference Las Vegas. Or I think the official website is what it is. FlatEarthFestivals.com. Yeah, FlatEarthFestivals.com. And uh, you can check it. I'm yeah. I'm opening. David Weiss will be there from the app. I'm sure he's brought that up to you. Uh, Jaron from Jaronism, yeah. Dave Murphy, and a whole bunch of other people. Witsit's going to be there maybe making some people cry it'll, it'll be awesome <laughs> well, and make he sure he debates yeah, there people, we go. people people cry when they debate him sorry what yeah so, so and i was just going to tell the folks remind them uh we're i just had david on i think 10 days ago and we're number nine on the referral list so you make are sure you use already F number nine in like less than two weeks wow that's pretty good yeah that's awesome so guys I, I fe files for the Good. I don't get any referrals from from that because I always announce it on my um my podcast and I try to work it into interviews. So he owes me. Yeah, it's I have it. My wife has it. We gift it to people uh, because you can't, yeah. like you said, you can't. It's it's, it's cool. It's a it's a cool visual thing, and people get it. Again, all you have to do is show them a single image, and the the reason it's a challenge. I'll put that. Let's end with this. Uh, the challenge I put out to trolls. The reason why we keep growing the way we do and we keep winning by attrition is because. The model that you're looking at on the screen, you know, the the like the app model right there, it's easier to explain, exponentially easier to explain than the solar system model. It, and it is. And what's why I throw out that science, I go, look, on with science, you need to know trigonometry and you know, calculus and quantum mechanics and string theory and all that other crap, right? You have to have a solar system and a, a galaxy around that and a universe around that. It's massive, it's absolutely incomprehensible for most people, right? With this, that's all you need. Just that little thing. That's just, it's just a little, it's a little snow globe. Technically, that's all. It, people can get their head around it really, really quickly. So I put it, the challenge out to people in science. I go, until you create a version of the solar system, which is easier to explain than ours, people are going to go with ours. Because people that's like right. easier stuff. They do. Uh, and they say, just because it's easy doesn't mean it's right. I go, no, it doesn't. But human nature means they're going to be drawn to it. So... Try and stop us. There you go.
There you go. Well done. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and bouncing things off and actually being able to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with somebody who has been such a part of this great awakening across the world. So thanks for everything you do. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Maggie.